What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast. I'm Andrea Renee, joined in studio by the blonde nerd, Brittany Brombacher. Hello. Hello. The salty one, Christine Steimer. Oh, my God. And Hi. back from outer space, it's Alexa Ray Korea. And she's Yay. also yeah. blonde. Perfect. And I'm also blonde. So she could be the other blonde the nerd. Song, outer space. I just got here to find you all making fucking Muppet noises. <laughs> That's, true. That's, true. That's true. We were making Muppet noises. Uh, welcome back, friend. Yeah! Yay! Woo! Yay! Woo! Wait, wait, we got, we got, video games. We got champagne! YouTube.com yeah. slash Let's Good Games. Two Cheers. video games and probably whiskey. Uh, yep, probably whiskey. No. Um, we are super excited that you're back. We have lots of, lots of stuff to talk about. Let's get crazy. Um, we are planning in the third segment of the show to talk about where you've been. Yes. What your future plans are. And to talk about fucking Kingdom Hearts. Ooh. Fucking Kingdom Hearts, but not well, fucking not, the not, Kingdom not, Hearts. Not, but not, ver- like. not the verb, but the adverb. Yes, <laughs> fucking yes. as an adverb. Is that a thing? Is that the right word? Yeah, you're the English person. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and by English, I, I mean the writer, the one who's supposed to know what the words. That's fine. The an word adjective. Adverb means. Would it be an adjective? Uh, fucking uh, as an adjective? Because the it, it's a noun. You're it's, it's describing. It's fucking Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts is a noun. That's true. God. So I, I guess it is an adjective. Kingdom Hearts. Look at you. You got it, Simer. <laughs> what if I'm totally wrong and the internet's like, oh my God, these people are the stupidest. Adjective, a word or phrase naming an attribute added to or grammatically related to a noun to modify or describe it. So it wouldn't be adjective. No, what? It, Kingdom Hearts is a noun. Is it though? It's a person, place, or thing. I learned that yes. in first grade. It is a noun. We don't know. It's a person, place, or thing. I learned that in first We don't know if Kingdom Hearts is a person, place, or thing. Oh, my God. The series hasn't even answered that question yet. There's some sass from... I'm not surprised there's sass. Um, Well, we want to welcome everybody back to the show. I'm frantically pulling show notes because, as you can see, we're all in the studio together. Uh, We had our fantastic patron streams this week we had our happy hour q a for all patrons at patreon.com slash what's good games we also had our after hour stream where the ladies indulged me by letting me play some paragon wah, because wah. by the time this podcast posts paragon will be gone forever goodbye Bye. forever Bye. someone uh, on the internet rip in peace paragon it peace. Peace. Get released. yes well rip i'm holding out peace. hope uh, so we're, I'm going to talk about that in the next segment, but our God of War spoiler cast is also up. Yes, we just recorded that hot off the presses. Um, when we say spoiler cast, we don't hold anything back. No. Yeah, we talk about all the plot points. Yeah. So if you're going into that and you haven't finished the game yet, that's 100 percent on you. You've been warned. It's literally called God of War spoiler cast and then in paren spoilers. So you can't screw that so up. So it's like not talk to me about spoilers. God of War. I've not finished it. Spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. We will not. No, we, we won't. We won't. No. This is why we did it without you. Not that we would ever want to do anything without you. But I have not played God of War. Dad of You've War. played some of some Dad of, of it. War. But just, just not much. It. No. Um, but a big th- uh, shout out and thank you, of course, to all of our, our patrons. You guys are fantastic. And also, I just want to let you guys know we celebrated a little milestone today. It's our 50th fucking episode. Oh, my God. What? Wow. We should get yeah. a cake or number a cookie. 50. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. a little drunk. Sorry. We did. <laughs> We did a wine tasting uh, for our Patreon exclusive video yeah. for the month of April for just one dollar, ladies and gentlemen. You can watch that wine tasting it's where uh, Alexa Ray gives us some Lord of the Rings lore. <laughs> um, but it, it was fun. We uh, we shot that today. It was a good time. Yeah. yeah. Um, everything's been going great. You guys like video games. Here to talk about video games. It's gonna Vindic- be a weird show, another weird show, but that's fine. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, it's fine. Um. But before we get into the news, because I have some a little bit, I'm going to continue my rant a little bit about oh great stuff. But no, before me, we, d- I'm going to join you. Yes, on that journey. Oh yes, boy, let's rant together, Steimer. Um, I'm 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 eating the salt this week. All right, but before we get there, I need to tell you that we have two fantastic sponsors this week that brought that bring what's good games to you 100 percent free. That's right, you can listen or watch our show without paying a dime, and that's because of awesome people like. The folks over at Quiet Story Blogs that have put out a brand new Kickstarter for a book called Video Game Abominations. 
What if there was a book, Alexa Ray, filled with all of your favorite video game characters, but then someone decided to take the piss out of them? Well, there is, and this is it. Video Game Abominations takes all the characters you know and then lovingly mocks them. The book is written and illustrated by gamers for gamers, and the book will be on sale for one month only, exclusively on Kickstarter. It's formatted like a satirical encyclopedia and will feature characters like Pac-Man, Solid Snake, and Mario. And on top of getting the book, backers will have the reward options to choose a character they want to see in the book or even get characters dedicated to them. What's this face you're well, making? I don't want this book. Wait, yes, you do. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, it sounds awful. The piss, it was the piss comment. I, oh, I was it's, a very, her, it's a very British it's a British, term. It's a British thing. I was watching her specifically to see what her reaction was and this it did not awful. disappoint. I actually think it's pretty funny. Let me read you a passage. How about a little sneak peek of the Pac-Man? So the way that it's set up. The is that, Pac-Man? Is that it has, a, it has an illustration well, of these like, like kind of demented... It, it's, it takes the character, but then kind of like warps them. That's what it sounded like. It sounds like Tim Burton's does video games. How did I just games. spill exactly. champagne all over my So the, Girl, I, I, don't, I don't Girl. know. Girl. Oh my gosh, Girl. you really Whoa. did. Whoa, holy shit. I don't know how this you happened. You guys can even see it on the video. YouTube.com. The, the, the Pac-Man We don't have any napkins. Creature. You have to deal with it yourself. Solve your own problems. <laughs> of enormous size and insatiable <laughs> hunger. Unable to survive more than a few seconds without ingesting its next meal. Oh my these gosh. omnivores are constantly feeding. However, despite the obvious threat they pose, these creatures were used by previous civilizations as entertainment. Placed in mazes, spectators would... Oh my gosh, you guys. Cyber, Cyrus losing her shit. No, she's literally grooming herself. Uh, with form currency. Oh, I can't even fucking read the rest of this. Oh my God, what is even happening? If you are listening on a podcast, ladies and gentlemen, you might want to do yourself a favor and head on over to YouTube.com slash What's Good Games and watch, and watch this in action. There, there. Uh, she's there, literally there. crying. Um, to learn more about video game abominations and to place your pledge, you can visit quietstoriesblog.com. You have until May 11th. To get your hands on this book before it's gone forever. Again, one more time. That's quietstoriesblog.com to get video game abominations. They have quite a few different reward tiers. So if you guys are interested in some of the really unique art and oh writing that they're doing over there. So thank you so much to them for sponsoring the show. Did you do it? Um, we're going to get into some news. Steimer, have you recovered from your <laughs> champagne so fiasco? Yeah. Yes. So what happened was Simer spilt the champagne, but the bra spilt, spilled. She was grooming herself like a cat. Like I literally just glanced <laughs> over and she's like licking, trying to lick her elbow. Alexa like, told herself. me to, to lick solve it your off. own problems. We don't have any napkins here. It's we, we, nope. really, we really don't. It's one of those shows. We're in rare form. There um, we go. It's fine. Okay. So we were talking a little bit about this before we started recording, but some news that happened early this week. Mm-hmm. Valve bought a development studio, and mm-hmm. then it looks like they're going to be actually be publishing a game, ladies and gentlemen. What? So the folks at Campo Santos, the team behind Firewatch, mm-hmm. have written a statement. The 12 of us at Campo Santos have agreed to join Valve, where we will maintain our jobs as video game developers and continue production on our current project in the Valley of the Gods. If you're the type of person who gives two flips about this news, we can elaborate a little bit more on this big decision. First, we really like making video games. Furthermore, and perhaps more accurately, we really like making and producing entertainment. From the day-to-day production of our last game, Firewatch, to the way we run the company, make merchandise, meet players at expos and shows, send out a quarterly literary journal, throw open to the public game demos in the middle of an artificial forest, all Whoa. of its gear towards surprising, delighting, and entertaining the customers who have shared in our success. I don't know if I've ever heard you speak that fast. That was like some auctioneer shit. Right? I'm amped up right now. In Valve, we found a group of folks who, to their core, feel the same way about the work that they do. This, you may be surprised to learn, doesn't happen every day. In us, they found a group of unique experiences and valuable, diverse perspectives. They quickly became an obvious match. So they said a couple other things, and then they said, yes, we're still making the Valley of the Gods as a Valve game. Yes, we'll still support Firewatch, and yes, we'll still produce the quarterly review and our regular blog content. Thanks so much for your interest in the games. We'll see you in Washington. Cheers. Yeah, Washington. We'll enjoy in the Valley of the Gods in 10 years, because Valve doesn't publish publish games. games. But that's none of my business. She says she drinks her drink. Well, I mean, this has been a thing that we, you know, we've talked about, you know, before about how like where is Valve's place right now? Are they just, you know, a e-commerce like marketplace selling other people's games? Clearly, they still have Dota. Clearly, they still have CS:GO, and those games are making money hand over fist for them. But they haven't published anything new in a while. And of course, there's Team Fortress Two and Left 4 Dead and all the other games. Yes, you don't need to like at me in the comments and tell me all the games that Valve produces. But I'm saying they haven't published anything new. Yeah, in quite a while. Really, CSGO was really their last new game that they published, right? I can't think of anything. Oh, no. What about the card game? The Dota card game? Is that out yet? Oh, oh I don't I'm think. 
Oh, Artifact? It's yeah. Artifact. So isn't the Valley of the Gods no, going to be like yet. some multiplayer MOBA now? No. Oh, gosh, I hope not. Girl, no, I'm I, don't, I'm I don't know, man. Attitude. It I'm says it's supposed to be coming feelings. 2018, Artifact, sometime 2018. Yeah. This is a weird mm. decision, but I can't imagine Valve wanting to really mess with what those guys have done. It's an odd yeah, it's choice. Kind of- like of all of the indie developers I could see Valve purchasing, I did not think a very heavily small story-based focus studio would be the thing that they purchased. Right. It's very weird. It is strange. It's like it's like EA funding unravel. But that's also what I'm a, I'm unsurprisingly salty about Firewatch because I didn't think it was that good of a game. You know, I also am with you. I was not wowed by Firewatch. Same. I thought it was I thought it was a very fine game. That was just great. It's just a good little game. Mm-hmm. I but thought I wasn't like narrative I wasn't like oh my off. god, this is fucking groundbreaking. The ending left a lot on the table. Like, the narrative, I feel like, was funneling you certain, or you were going certain ways with it, and I just feel like the ending was like, well, we got to finish this game now. Yeah. I feel like the ending was very abrupt. It's a game I I tried, but I don't remember why I never finished it. I know it's coming to Switch, and I'm it's excited really short. to try it on it's Switch. Not it's short. It's a good, okay, it's a good, short experience. It's a really cool game. Like, what they do is, like, the nice. It's pretty. The concept is really interesting. But, the, like, it's a cool game. It's the not game a wonderful was grasping. game. I was like, oh, this is tragic. And then you start your thing. But, it, no. No one was, no one here. So, like, oh, what? my God. It was really great. No. Mm. I mean, from what I played, I don't know why I stopped playing. But I remember at the beginning, like, I was super invested in it. And then, for some reason, it fizzled. And I don't know why. But, oh, for I know, me, I like, playing on PC. That was my problem. One of the, quote, unquote, plot twists just absolutely ruined it for me. Yes. Oh. Yes. And no. I was like, the, uh, it's uh, odd. No. It's weird. Yeah. It just pissed me off. <sighs> anyways yeah yeah so well. yeah it seems a little yeah a little surprising did not see this coming but hey yeah if it's a good thing it's a good thing and i'm happy that's one way to fund a game get valve to buy you i i think what's what to me what the interesting part about this is is that like they're not just buying any publisher or any developer they're buying a pretty small studio that's um, how they can afford them i not really valve's like I feel like Valve could afford almost they could anybody. Afford a lot. I don't. That was the bu- the bubbles talking. Um, <laughs> I thought Valve. There were all these rumors that Valve was going to buy like EA I don't or think like do that, buy but... some other publisher. Why would they want to? I don't know. I don't know why Valve would want to add do a lot more cost to their business. I don't know. I think the last rumor was that Microsoft would purchase Valve. And that was the oh, one that, that was heavily that was circulating. Uh, and I said that that year. rumor right. is utter horseshit. I, was I like, don't know. Valve is like the, it's like the beyond section in Mid Bath and Beyond. It's just kind of like <laughs> out there. What is the you beyond You know it's section? there. You know it's there and there's cool stuff in it. But it's like a hodgepodge of stuff that you take out of your cart before you go or you buy. And like, you're like, I absolutely need this weird back scratcher. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's, it's, I don't, I don't know. Like, I've, it's. It's there and like we acknowledge it, but I just feel like again they haven't put out anything new in a while, so it's just kind of like I think it's floating up there. It's more like it's something that we've been excited about. Like CSGO and Dota are things that that people obviously very much enjoy, but I don't think any of us here are like Armor Girl real excited about it. Absolutely not. A portal. If there was more portal or more left for for dead, okay. Other than that though, Valve games I'm like, man, Dota I don't care about Artifact. Nah, no thanks. Not my not my jam. Unless they're like they've been working on like a new portal for like however many years. I don't know they're that they're going like, to do any more not Didn't yet. Kim Swift leave? Yeah. They have all the money, so it wouldn't surprise me if they were working on something and they're just taking their sweet-ass time I with like it. how none of us are mentioning Half-Life. It's just why like, oh, why would It's just at the point where it's like, it's not happening. No, like, it's, it's become, it's, uh, even the joke about Half-Life 3 is so played out at this point that it's like, it's hard to even like, make it funny anymore. Okay, if someone yeah. would be like, hey, your life depends on it, call this the right way, is it ever coming? No. No. There you go. Never, no, never, no. no, no, because it would have Especially to be at this point. Like, what do you gameplay and mechanics and all of and combat and everything that games do has evolved so much and so many more interesting concepts have come out. If they put out Half Life Three, it would have to be something totally not Half Life at all, in Com- order to complete, stand out and, and like completely reinvent some sort of mechanic, like, like Prey, like completely go in a different direction. Yeah. Just like use the same name it. and make something completely different. And be Probably. Like BT no. dubs, not the same game. Yeah. Hmm. They could God of War it. <laughs> mm. Potentially. But I, I mean, mean, I think there's a whole generation of gamers who have no idea what Half Life even is. Sure. 
I also right? think the most that they would probably get out of that is disappointment, like people being disappointed. Well, because the anticipation the is too is, it's yeah. too big at this point. The the longer a game is in development or supposedly in development, the longer more time passes, the lower the threshold is for complete and utter fan disappointment. Yeah. What do you know about this Alexa Ray? Looking at you, Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna talk about that later. <laughs> um, something else. Speaking you just of like a horse. Speaking of disappointment, mm. oh boy, sit back, ladies and gentlemen. Oh God, are we oh going to talk about Destiny? Let's talk about the Destiny a, disappointment train. Right. It's about to get good. Bungie Go revealed details about Destiny 2's expansion to Warmind this week. Warm we wind. should call it Warm Wind because it is Warm a giant wind. fart yep. in your face. <laughs> yep, it stinks. It lingers too long. It fucking yep. makes you bloated and gross feeling. Yeah, it's not, and it disappoints everyone around you. Yep. Like, Ooh, okay. Why'd you eat that, man? That sounds like a, that sounds like a fart. That okay. Like a fart. So here's a, here's the shtick. So Bungie did a live stream this week. Uh, they paraded a bunch of different developers out there. Which, by the way, not a single lady. Disappointing. Not a but single lady. Not, not a single uh, lady. lady. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> uh, some. Let's start with the good before we get to the bad and the ugly. That sounds like a good idea. The good thing, they announced Vicarious Visions is working with Bungie. That's oh. cool. I like Vicarious Visions. They huh. are part of the Activision stable of developers. They have worked on other cool projects in the past. Skylanders. Yeah. Well, most recently, the Insane Trilogy. Skylanders. Cute. Although, I would say, Bungie's got a lot of employees. Yes. I got a lot of employees. Oh, no, we're going to get there. Yeah, Don't for worry. a studio that's not really putting a lot of stuff out, there sure are a lot of people up there <laughs> doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get her started yet. She has to, she has to get through okay, the good. Sorry, positive things. The good. I'm okay, just good poking thing. the bear right now. Um... I really enjoyed the prologue cinematic we saw with Anna Bray. Mm-hmm. Did you? Uh, I did. Yes. One thing that Destiny has always done consistently well is graphics and cinematics. Every time I play that game, I'm reminded just how beautiful the game is animated, how great the art is in that game. Yep. Fantastic skyboxes, really beautiful cutscenes. Um, my only gripe about them is that there's not enough of them. I want more. I want more story. More, more skyboxes. I want so much story that we don't um, know what to do with it. So that was really great. So she's been part of the lore of Destiny for quite some time. And we haven't really gotten to see her on screen ever. And so it's cool that they're bringing her in. Um, we found out that they are making some good changes to Crucible for good things. They've added a ranking system, both for regular PvP called Valor. And then for competitive playlists called Glory. And glory feels like it works kind of like ELO works, where if you win, you get uh, bonuses, and if you lose, you get penalties. And there will they will have streak bonuses. So if you have a win streak, you'll get stuff. If you have a lose streak, you'll get penalized. And that's only in the competitive playlist, so it's important for people who are really big in Crucible to know. And they've also added an uncapped prestige system with rewards, which is something that was definitely overdue. Because right now, if you play a lot of Crucible, a lot of PvP and Destiny, they don't really have a way for you to showcase that you play a lot. It's like, because um, you pretty much cap out at a specific level. Um, there are a couple of emblems that will show you like how many PvP kills and things like that. But it's really good that they're adding in this prestige system. So you can essentially prestige unlimited amounts of times and you get m rewards every time you do so. And then you can kind of wear it as like a badge of honor. So th I think that that's great. I think that the overall feeling that I got from the developers when they were talking about Warbind is that they're honing in and trying to really cater towards their hardcore audience, which is good that they're finally like picking a lane. I don't necessarily agree with the decision that they've made so far. I need to see how it's going to play out when the expansion actually releases, but they've at least committed to like, Hey, we get that the people who are here and are still here mm -hmm. are not, feeling satisfied so if we're not satisfying the people who are the masses and we're not satisfying our hardcore players we're really screwing if we need to pick one or the other mm -hmm. and so now they've picked to commit to their hardcore community they had a big uh, community summit where they invited a bunch of content creators who are very deep in the destiny community to go up to the studio talk to the team uh, a lot of these content creators came out uh, this week uh, earlier this week right before the reveal and said, hey, we had these great conversations. I'm under NDA. I can't tell you what those conversations were. But look for these changes that we really want to see coming in the next expansion in the fall. So this is kind of a big whiff, I think. Like, what's the point of having a community summit? And then having them all tell about their experiences. But say, oh, by the way, this expansion that's coming out now, 
is not going to have any of these changes we talked about. Is that them saying, hey, we're listening to what you're complaining about. However, this expansion has been underway for far too long that we can't implement. Correct. Okay. Pretty much. Yes. I was about to say, development's not like a quick turnaround thing. Yeah. So we're listening, but, but there we are can't tell so you anything many about it. Of them. Well, the problem was that they had a round one and that was called Destiny One. And so they should have learned more from that. Right. And that's the, the big gripe here. So let me now that's probably about it for me with things that I'm excited about. Steimer, do you have any other positives? Wasn't there a big, powerful weapon that you guys were excited about? No. Not really. No. Oh, oh, I so thought, I thought for it was a me good thing. in particular, because I'm I'm more of a casual Destiny player than you are. None of this excited me. Literal, that makes sense. literal zero. Really? Yeah, no, and I've heard that same feedback from other people who are casual Destiny players as well. I'm thinking, you know, when I hop back into Destiny 2, Jason's actually been bugging me a lot. He's like, let's play Destiny 2, let's play Destiny 2, because we had so much fun with the first one. And I was like, yeah. no, wait. But I love, like, I like that there's a new story aspect coming to it. But other than that, I, I tuned out. Yeah. I was just, Alexa Ray, are you okay? You're staring at the ceiling. I'm zoning out because you're talking about Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, come on. I at least try to act like I'm engaged when you're talking about Kingdom Hearts. Nah. So before we hop into Poking the Bear, we watched this live stream with Andrea. We did. And it was very entertaining. Because <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen you so... Mm. Worked up? Worked up. <sighs> well, it was funny because we were like, all right. So before, we were... We, you know, they were like, it's a new area. It's a new... There are new weapons. There are what was it? new enemies new what was the other there was Activities. like there was five news right exclusive waves five new things new, i would say there's like new weapons really new, new, new loot things? new activities new uh modes and new area uh new um location and it's like the new location new enemies, new location spoiler alert if you really want to know nothing about this you should have stopped listening um well this is all publicly available i know it's i know, not I, know, secret, I, know. You know? I just meant like, it's on mars which is not new they literally said we're going back to mars and I'm like, back to Mars. We've already been to Mars. Um, so it's on a Helos base. It's in the polar ice caps of Mars. Uh, they're receding. And so they're showing off a time capsule as they're receding. Um, and because of that, the hive, the fucking hive are yes, back, back as the new enemy. And I said back last again. week, you said, you so it. help you me God, it. if the fucking hive are back, I'm going to scream. So oh. ah! I'm so mad, you guys. You can that do was, better that's than a that. Well, no, she doesn't want to blow people's ears. No, I'm out. holding back because, like, I don't actually want to scream. But you do, but just not murder people. So I'm just like, and I've had a couple of days to simmer about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were real fired up because you went straight from the stream right into kind of funny. Yeah, that's well, when that was you fun really to watch. were. Oh, like, I ranted. That was on great. Games that was Daily. Great. Oh, yeah. It oh, was yeah. a thing. No. It happened. It was and a lot of people wrote to me. It was interesting when I went into the comments of the kind of funny video how it was like, a lot of people were on my side to be like, this is bullshit. I love the salt. You totally ranted the right way. And then some Destiny people who are really hardcore in the community came to me and were like, this is why I'm excited about it. A couple of people, and I actually had a, a meaningful dialogue about it. And then a lot of people were like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. It's such bullshit. It, uh, uh, Helos is a new location. Okay, yes. If you want to get like in the fucking nitpicky about Semantics. it. Semantics. Of course, it's technically a new location. I'm mad, though, because they say new location, and then they bring it back to Mars. The developer even said we're going back to Mars. He said that verbatim. Um, there was the a stream. lot of weird, like weird word choices that they used on the stream, right? Where it, it basically they were like, "This is new." Remember Destiny One? And I'm like, "Wait, I'm sorry. Is this new, or is this you bringing something back and calling it new?" When I think of new, I think of think of the universe and how expansive and massive it is. You would think they would go somewhere different, maybe a planet, a different planet, a galaxy, perhaps. But no, they're going uh, back like to even Mars. like you mentioned on kind of funny games daily, like moons planet have like they all have different moons like, yeah. like there's, there's other places to go you can right. pick up a planet it'll be fine yeah and mm. some of the people who were being apologists for this and i'm going to use that word Ooh. go ahead let's the fight, let's fight about it is that is that they were like oh well this is an expansion you can't expect them to be doing something that big i go yes i can, yes, can. it's an expansion why you, can't I? This, this is, is not regular sorry, who, DLC. Who, who, yeah. who publishes Activision? I I mean that they have a lot of resources. I think you would talk yeah. about some kind of funny. Like also, it's not like they're a little crowdfunded little studio that doesn't have access to make. And here, here we go. I don't really have what's a stake in this game, whatever it is, a player in the game. But a I, horse in the race. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I feel your pain as someone who's passionate about mini games. It's the level you are of Destiny. I understand why you're frustrated. Yeah. yeah. And it just seems like some kind of bullshit excuses for some things. It's like it's not That's like all. they're building an entirely new planet. 
right? Like the going to the planet is literally like a fucking screen and you load into it and then it's just the world. Like it's not like, I mean, obviously it is work. You need assets and all that crap, but like, come on, just do. That was a good Muppet voice, by the way. Come on, do something. <laughs> I'm just blown away that like they've continued to bungle Destiny and yet they continue to be given the funds to keep making it. Because Activision has a 10 year when, plan for Destiny. When does right? the damn plug get pulled? I mean, I, mean, I think it would have to. I mean, but Destiny Two sold really well. But what's it their was the number two selling base. game of 2017. Yeah, I would like to know what their active. We call that base puffing, is. as Judge Judy would say. <laughs> puffing, puffing. When you like make something seem like it's be a lot better than it actually is, and then it's not. Because for that kind of game, like sales are great, but it's daily active users that really indicate the health of the game. Absolutely, and I think that they could be doing so much more in that department if they had just changed the things from destiny one in destiny two that the community asked for and they have done some of it i don't want to say that like they've completely fucked this up because obviously i've still spent i've still spent many 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 hours in destiny two and very much enjoyed myself had a great time still think it's a great game and like this is the thing that i was trying to really kind of drive home on games daily was like i the reason i'm so fired up about this is because I care. It's the reason I was fired up about Telltale and their shitty engine. And why we were because fired I up about Breath of the about Wild. It. Yeah. And it's like, I want it to be the best version of itself that it can be. And I know that that potential is in there. And the idea that people are like, don't worry, you j- it's coming in the fall, you just got to hang in there. I'm like, yes, but that doesn't mean that I can't be upset now that they're literally coming out and saying, well, we didn't make any changes that you guys asked for, but we're going to talk about those changes right now, but you can't get them until later. And like the little shit is really what pisses me off. Like the fucking vault space, how that's still not fixed, which we talked about on last week's show. And on the stream this week, Bungie showed off an emote wheel. Yes. Do you think this is a fucking groundbreaking game dev having more than one emote on a wheel at a time? Like, heaven forbid that this be a fucking feature that you can put in the game when you launch. When you sell emotes in your game! No, you only get one. For what it's I- worth, I'm playing Neverwinter Nights. That game was built in the 90s, and there's like eight emotes per wheel. It's, it's like, it's, <laughs> it's, it, 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 I, I... I'm literally speechless. I'm so frustrated about it. And then on the stream, they're like, we're finally implementing the emote wheel. And then they have all these green emotes. And then Deej, their fucking community guy, even makes like a, a, like a, like a crack at the fact that he's got the green crappy emotes. And I'm like, why are you making crappy emotes? Why are you making crappy gear at all? If it's like throwaway emotes, like get rid of them. Don't even make them. Don't even have green, green emotes as a thing. Have be like one green emote. And then, like, have you earn legendaries in game through rewards through engrams, and then have people buy, you know, like select exotics and legendaries? Like, that's fine. Like, if that's the way you want to run it. But like, this idea that there's like a dozen like crappy emotes, and like, and they're like, oh, ha, ha, we gotta get you better emotes. I'm like, why are you making shitty emotes in the first place? Okay, what's going on? Like, what do you think's happening? Like, truly. I honestly think like there probably was a giant ego problem for too, far too long at that studio. That they were like, we're Bungie. We fucking made Halo. We've now made, like, arguably one of the most successful, like, especially by financial metrics, new IPs of the last generation for console, right? I think that is probably, like, an actual fact. I would need to look it up. I would say you can, you're wrong me, but that's not something we do on this show. Uh, But, um, and then just coming off of that going, like, we're, like, king shit of fuck mountain like on top of the world we have this great community who plays our game who loves our game who praises our game like me i did i played tons of destiny you know we've got the what's good guardians and and they're just like you know like we'll get to when we get to it or we have a plan and the plans in place like i don't know this is me just like spitballing Mm -hmm. because like and i for the life of me as a creator myself i can't imagine my community constantly asking for something like, if you guys out there listening to the show or watching the show were constantly like, we want this thing, we want this thing, we want this thing, and then we, we were just like, nah, dog, we're good. We don't want to give it to you. Like, I, I don't know where that comes from. I can't. I can't. I mean, granted, it's not as, I mean, for us, it's, it's easy because it's like we're just like a little team and we can like respond to that. Right. I feel like it, this goes back to the transparency and the communication. Like, hey, you know, I'll, maybe all it would take from Bungie is like, hey, we know we're not delivering all the things you're asking us for, but we're paying attention. We hear you. We just need at to be patient. At this point, that's not enough. But wouldn't it count for something if they no, at least addressed it? No, because they've already done it? that. Mm-hmm. 
I oh, think no matter okay. what. I, I like that you're trying. No, no. If they, you know, you know this community better than I do. They've already come out right and said like, hey, we hear you. These are all things that we understand. We're screwing up. We're going to do our best. But if they've already but done their that. their best isn't good enough. And it's never good enough because they're just literally not doing the thing. In yeah. that case, that's totally fair. It's I think true. it's too little too late. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm curious. I really, like, they won't. But I really, really want them to, like, release numbers of, of how well this is doing. Um, because I'm just curious because I only have anecdotal evidence of people who I, I've worked with um, past and present. And, like, they're, like, these are people who were so hardcore into Destiny 1 and, like, played all throughout, like, all the expansions. And they were done with Destiny 2 before the first expansion even came out. And they were, like, oh, I'm not going back. And it's just, like, hot damn. Like, even, like, those people who I knew were, like, the most hardcore weren't and then they're and they're like my clan's not going back either like they're it's just like they don't they're they're done they're over it and i think the problem was like destiny one they still saw a lot of success with even though there were problems and i think they maybe made the roadmap for destiny two a little too similar and didn't realize that you really do need to make a lot of leaps and bounds especially with, with a property like this i understand they have a 10-year plan but do you think maybe they're holding stuff back to stretch it out over that 10 years um that's possible, but I think the real issue... I mean, and from a lore perspective, certainly they are. That's why the story has always been lacking, right? But, like... I think it's just that they don't really know what they're doing with the story. Well, that's a very good possibility as well. But I also think, like, the, the pain points that people like me and, and Steimer and many other people out there who play uh, Destiny and Horror Guardians feel are, like, more quality of life issues in, like, basic um, gameplay mechanics... Like the vault issue mm -hmm. of uh, the vault space and like limiting how much gear you can carry. It's like that's such an easy fix. And I say that completely out of my ass as someone who doesn't make games, but as someone who's played several games with very fantastic inventory management systems over the past two years to say like if these other games are doing it, it's possible. There's no way that you can't do it with all of the resources you have at hand. Having the studio's large as Bungie, having a publisher like Activision, having the success of both Destiny and Destiny Two behind them, pulling like, in de other developers, like right. Like, like if, I mean, if you have to bring on vicarious visions to help you, like what the fuck is going on over there, uh, Bungie? Like really? And like, what's interesting to me is that I haven't had to, I haven't had the opportunity to have personal conversations with any of the creators that were at the summit. But supposedly from the videos that I've watched, and you guys have probably also watched some creator videos as well. They've got answers. They just can't tell what those answers are yet. Or Ho ever. Are they ever you, going to say it? I don't, it's unclear. And that's the part I'm, I was trying to say that clearly they already screwed this up. Is th If the answers are out there but they can't talk about him. Huh? Well, you wouldn't want to distract from Warmind, which is about to Warm come Wind, out. Warmind, I know, but clearly but the backlash is not. why do that community not, event right I don't. I think that launch, was very right? ill-timed. Warmwind. Sounds like a fart. I mean, unless it they were, I mean, like they were trying to get. No, here's what. So you do the community event because you want the most hardcore of the hardcore, the people who are probably going to be the most positive about your game to know that things are coming because they're going to be slightly disappointed with this otherwise. Right. Because Warmind doesn't have a lot of the things that these people have been asking for. So you have to tell them that that shit's coming right. so that they don't feel like they're, so they don't take a big old crap all over Warmind. Whereas we already are anyway. Okay. But <laughs> so with that, do you think in the coming weeks, Bungie will address this and be like, Hey, sorry, that wasn't what we that's not the reaction we wanted we're making some changes we just cannot talk about them right now i i, I fucking hope so but i don't think so i think they're just gonna release war mine and wait it out and hope that it no don't do that okay. i don't Activision know if that's can true, can, but... can bear yeah. the brunt of that financial storm. absolutely they can yeah. but man poor bungie that's a terrible i mean activision has published a lot of crap games true yeah but like if you think about all the licenses that they've owned over the last decade mm. You think about, like, a couple of those Transformer games, a couple of those <laughs> Spider-Man games. You guys know what I'm talking about. I'm sure it's hard. I'm sure some of the folks at Bungie are very well aware, obviously, of what's going on, but they probably can't say anything. Yeah. Well, exactly. yeah, that's real shitty. You can't, not unless you want to lose your job. <sighs> <sighs> All right. Well, listen, we have Alexa right here. I don't want to just, like, rant and be sad. All I right. Next be happy story. and goofy. Anything fun? Goofy. Um, Speaking of goofy. No. Huh? no. Uh, Gooby. <laughs> Gooby. Oh Gooby. No. Uh, the only other story that I have pulled for the show notes is um, all about microtransactions, you guys. Oh, no. What is three of the biggest, happening? Three of the biggest firms in the industry could face criminal charges 
after the Belgian Gaming Commission found that certain loot boxes violate national laws. So this is from uh, gamesindustry.biz. Following a five-month investigation into Star Wars Battlefront 2, FIFA 18, Overwatch, and Counter-Strike Global Offensive, the BGC found that only Battlefront 2 did not directly contravene the Belgian gambling legislation. I'm sorry, what? what? Bet you didn't see that coming. Oh, what? We never saw that coming. No. Wow. The the BGC director, Peter Nassensen, uh, Nassensen? Nassensen? Nason, I don't know. Nason. That's, a, that's a word. We I don't, don't know, know how. To, there's a lot of consonants, you guys. Uh, noted that players of these games are tempted and misled, and that none of the protective measures for gambling have been applied. "Quote: Now that it is clear that children and vulnerable people, in particular, are exposed to them and unprotected, game manufacturers both." Bo- bo- oh. <clears throat> Sorry, game manufacturers, but also parties such as FIFA, for example, are called upon to halt this practice, he said. Minister of Justice Cohn Geens, who commissions the investigation following the fallout over the Battlefront 2 loot box controversy last year, said in a statement today, that was earlier this week, that mixing games and gambling is, quote, dangerous for mental health. Quote, we have already taken numerous measures to protect both minors and adults against the influence of, among other things, gambling advertising. This is why we must also ensure that children and adults are not confronted with games as a chance games of chance when they are looking for fun in a video game how does battlefront not how do they get i am flabbergasted yes violation of gambling law is a criminal offense in electronic arts valve and activision blizzard could each face an eight hundred thousand euro fine if the offending loot boxes are not removed there is also scope for a five-year prison sentence but these punishments can be doubled when minors who would they arrest yeah, who gets They're arrested? They're going to arrest Gabe Newell and send him to Belgium prison? Right. It, no, I don't know who it would be. The CFO, Whose maybe? fault would it be? The uh, the CFO, the guy that... The designer. The guy that designed the loot box. Like, who go... The guy who programmed the loot it? box. Who's Listen, fault the, I think, is it? I wow. think the, the prison sentences are more, That's like, extreme. on paper than oh, an yeah. actual, like, application. It'd be I hilarious think, if they gave him, like, a little foot ankle, like, a house arrest thing. They were like, please put this on. Yeah, I think this We would, can't actually enforce this. I think this would but probably Patrick be... Patrick Soderlund on house arrest? Yeah, this no. would definitely be like a like a um, like a fine a fine situation like an FTC mm, fine yeah. kind of a situation. But um, but a, almost a million dollars. Do you think there will ever be a week when Battlefront Two is not in our news? Yeah, there's been weeks. I hope to God it comes yeah, soon. Kind of say. They'll be so logical. Yes, they will be. Watchable. Um, this is interesting. I think that it's good that some countries are taking a stand because I think it's going to mean pretty rapid change in the loot box and microtransaction ecosphere. I think the public backlash that came swift and steady over the last six to 12 months is also a good sign to that publishers are going to have to make some changes. Um, I don't think, I think when you're talking about prison time, like it it, it gets a little little crazy. Um, The fine I think is a good thing. It does almost feel like a slap on the wrist for these companies. A million dollar fine is really kind of a drop in the bucket for all three of these people. EA, yeah, Valve, but and Activision that's just Blizzard, from Belgium, right? And so, yeah. like, if other countries started to, like... Started loving fines, Because they're not yeah. making that money back from that audience. Oh, no, from that territory? No. Definitely not. Um, wow. But, yeah, so this is interesting. Um, yeah, this... We talked about Belgium looking into this months ago. We did, yeah. And now mm-hmm. it's a thing that's... And now they're like, you know what? Battlefront 2, not Battle so bad. But these fine. other things... Battle but Overwatch, how dare you? Which is so funny, because we were like, Overwatch, not that bad. <laughs> And I, yeah, it makes you wonder. <laughs> it's does, all vanity does, items. Yeah, does this come down to people not quite understanding the, the politics of the industry in the sense that, you know, if you want to have uh, cosmetic items and loot boxes, like, that doesn't bother me at all because it's like, you know what you're getting. But it's when you do stuff like Battlefront 2 did where there's a roundabout it's way power, where, it, pay to play. Yeah, where it turns into a gambling situation because you can take the things that you've earned, break them down, use those things that you broke down to get the actual loot boxes like that's when it's really fucking sketchy as hell so i'm wondering if these people have anyone on their team that actually know highly doubt it how that whole situation played out what is happening i feel like every and i know it's not literally every week but there's always something new whether it's ea apologizing and being like hey we screwed up and we understand it or now it's i mean it's to be expected because this is like a big thing that's going on it was a kerfuffle Kerfuffle. Exactly. I wonder how much this will change just change like how loot boxes come out in like future games. Like, is this the end? Is this the death of the it's loot box? No. It is the altercation of the loot box. Because I feel <laughs> like altercation's wrong. Evolution. <laughs> evolution. Evolution. But if you talk to someone in the industry, I feel like they're gonna say, hey, you know, 
cosmetic items I don't have a problem with. And I feel like that's the message that we're trying to push here is mm. like cosmetic stuff. You want to spend your money on those loot llamas, you go on with your bad self. Yeah. Loot llamas. But if you're going to put some crazy wall or. And I also think like having the option, like you system. have loot boxes, but then you also have other ways that are maybe slightly longer or like more surefire ways of getting the things that you want. Sure. Like that's nice. Crazy. Yeah. Anyway, um, before anyway. we um, close off this first segment, um, I want to mention at the time of recording, some shit is happening with this meteor business in Fortnite. Um, we don't know where it's going to go, but I guess by Friday, it's going to evolve into something different. So if you're listening to this podcast and it's already happened, but the update is that um, Epic kicked the teasing up a notch with an emergency testing pattern image with a llama emblazoned on the front, <laughs> naturally to suggest that something more might be happening soon. So the original story was that um, over the last few weeks, speculation, of course, has been rampant. And I'm reading here from Game Informer uh, about comets in the sky in Fortnite Battle Royale. Now it seems that Epic is happy to throw fuel on the fire. At this point, the community is pretty sure that a meteor is going to hit the Tilted Towers, a popular landing spot in the game's Battle Royale mode. Earlier this week, a Redditor on the game subreddit noticed four signs that indicate Epic is playing along in a decidedly non-helpful way. The signs indicate a building, a hard hat, a meteor, and the word today scratched out and replaced with tomorrow. Assuming the signs aren't meant to be taken literally, Epic seems to be poking fun at the doomsayers who are predicting the destruction of the Tilted Towers with a certainty on any given day. So... Something is going to happen with this meteor in Fortnite, and I'm sad that our show is published at a time where we're not going to be able to tell you what it is, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So if you're a Fortnite fan, might want to log in. I'm curious. I'm not even like, I haven't played the Battle Royale mode aside from like a few minutes or like whatever, like a few times, but yeah, I've been hearing, hearing about this meteor forever. So is it like yeah. the moon in Majora's Mask? Mm, may mm. maybe i don't know what that means a face is gonna pop out of it it's like a time uh, mechanic like a time image or mask you have three days to finish the game and every day that passes this moon gets closer, closer. It, it's gonna and impact it crashes oh. and it has a oh. town oh. face on it destroys it's a really it's a horrifying moon. face too it's yeah, terrifying it's like yeah <laughs> okay, well, yeah no we gotta <laughs> show you i got you Str Str okay. that's pretty much it strummer 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 Oh my god! I see. I told you. Yeah, it's a horrifying face in yes, the moon. Yeah, in Majora's sorry. Mask. That's horrible. Yeah. And, then, yeah, and when you're running around the game world, if you look up, that face is just staring down at you. I would Always. never play this game. Wherever you go, you look to the it's sky, and game. that face is staring down at you. It is. No, I don't like it. Andrew, have you finished Majora's Mask? Nope. Okay, because I, I know you like her with that now. moon staring at you. I started it on 3DS when it was uh, re-released, but I never finished it. Okay. Mmm. I, I honestly haven't turned my 3DS on in like a year. I was talking to you last night. I would <laughs> love to. And you too, Steimer. You and I have talked about doing this. Look, we're in time. Yeah. I can just sit down and walk you girls, ladies, women through yeah. it. I don't want to finish it. Yeah. Anymore. Why are you mad at me? Because I didn't turn my 3DS on. Because Detective Pikachu came out. <laughs> Man, girl. <laughs> well, you know what we can talk about in our next hands-on segment? Your time with Detective Pikachu. Maybe. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are going to take a break. Uh, we know that some other big release dates got announced. Wolfenstein 2 is coming to Switch in June. Yeah. H1Z1 is coming to open beta and PS4. Um, some other stuff Final happened. Final Fantasy 15 skins in Minecraft. Let's go. Woo! Boop, boop. Go grab a drink, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Sing it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the second segment of the What's Good Games podcast, brought to you completely free today by Ripped Gamers. 
If you've let life and gaming take the front seat for a while and your health is not where you want it to be, Tim from Ripped Gamers is here to help. Tim is an online weight loss coach who works exclusively with video gamers. He was overweight himself once and struggled to find a routine that worked for his busy and gaming-filled lifestyle. Nowadays, he's 48 pounds lighter and still going in the pursuit of abs like Kratos. His mission is to help as many gamers as possible get started with their own weight loss journeys. To help you get started, he's offering two things, ladies, both what? of which are completely free. First... Yes. There's a step-by-step, zero-equipment-required fitness and nutrition program you can download instantly. You can also join the Ripped Gamers Facebook group for support. Advice from other gamers doing the journey just like you. We're over 200 members now, you guys. Wow. Oh, my great. Nice. Nice. Secondly, he's coaching people one-on-one. -on -one. If you're serious about achieving your goals, he'll take away all the guesswork and show you exactly how to look more like Kratos with personalized coaching, completely online, and 100% free. I don't know that I want to look like Kratos, though. Same. I like my hair. Uh, so if you're excited to kickstart your weight loss goal, head on over to RippedGamers.com and grab your free program or apply for coaching. That's RippedGamers, R-I-P-P-E-D-G-A-M-E-R-S.com and get started on your journey today. Yeah. What do you got against Kratos? The Kratos grunt. Kratos <laughs> grunt. I like how, Andrea, the way you compared yourself to Kratos was your hair. Well, I mean, he's bald. listen, as a woman, I don't think it's as easy for me to get those kinds of abs that Kratos has. Oh, no. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, mostly because, like, just biologically speaking, men have more muscle tissue on their skeleton than women do. That's just, you know. That's the way we are. That's science. That's the weird Um, And I'm okay with that. I don't need Kratos abs. No. I don't need Kratos biceps to feel healthy. You don't, you need, don't need to be able to lift a tree. Yeah. No. Yeah. Or, like, those giant rocks that he's throwing all the time. That's just one of those Big old You just want your hair. Yeah. That's all it is. That's fair. Yeah, yeah I like exactly. having long hair. That's fair. Um, so we obviously have all played God of War. We've talked about God of War the last two weeks on the show. There is currently a God of mm. War spoiler cast mm -hmm. available for interested parties. Uh, mm. As we mentioned, there are spoilers. Should I say one more time? There are spoilers in the spoiler cast. Um, it's in the name, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you want to check that out, what's good games .com, or you can go to youtube.com slash what's good games, or you can listen to it on podcast services. Mm -hmm. Wherever you're listening to this show, you probably saw the spoiler cast published. Um, so that's fun. So we're probably not going to talk about no. God of War this week. Unless, Alexa Ray, since you have not been able to talk about it on the show, you've only just started God of War. Yes, I'm playing it with two other people, which is the biggest mistake ever because we have to wait for all of us to be home and we're not getting away. Um, it's very pretty. Yes, beautiful. Kratos grunts a lot and the grunt is starting to really, like I honed in on it and now I'm like, why? Now you, can't, now you can't unhear it? I can't unhear the grunt every time the grunt happens. <laughs> it's there. It's always there. The grunt is always there. Um, I'm not... I don't think I'm far enough in to make like a judgment call on it yet just because I'm so early game. But it's very pretty. Now, do you think playing with two other people hinders the emotional attachment? Did you feel that with Horizon at all? Because I know that's how you played Horizon. Yeah, no. Like, we, it's like, it's kind of like watching a movie and one of us has the controller. Mm -hmm. Um, It's, and like, our rule is like, no backseat. Like, don't, gaming, don't, no don't backseat. backseat. If the controller's in your hand, you're doing whatever you want to do. Got it. Um, which, that's yeah. Important. I mean, I mean, it's fine, but. We've had moments where we've been like, oh, my God, or like, whoa, or like, what, or what? Like, we've had moments. Like, there's the first fight with the stranger in the beginning, and all of us were just like, I was the one playing at that point, and all of us were just sitting there like, like we're watching a freaking Avengers movie, and everyone is getting punched in the face and flying over the screen. We were just stopped, like, watching. So it's really cool. It's really nice. Um, but... I might take the disc and go somewhere and play it on my own because I really want to get through it. And those yeah. two people are never home anymore. Yeah. yeah. That, would be, so, that, would, that would be frustrating. To yeah. Be like, I have to, I have to I wait have to, to wait. play this thing that I really like. Yeah. I, it's interesting that you do that because I'm trying to think of Jason and I were, I, I love my husband, but I hate playing story driven games with him because he doesn't give a rat's ass about story. And I want to talk to everyone. I want to look at everything. I want to get super immersed. Yeah. And I know you're listening because he listens to all of our shows. Oh, hi Jason. Yeah. He's addicted to them. It's really funny. Um, but I like to take my sweet time. I like to talk, explore every dialogue option and do things a particular way. And I know he doesn't care about that. So I would always feel like we played Divinity Originals and two, we had an amazing time, but I was kind peeper. Of it's the peeper problem. The peeper problem. I love you so much. Alexa, right? We're going to call it the peeper problem when you don't want 
to you just want to power through and not examine things and just get ahead. The it's peeper, the peeper problem. It's the peeper okay, problem. Okay, that works for me. The peeper problem. Peeper problem. Okay. Peeper. Peeper. The peeper problem. Yeah, God of War. It's there. Well, I'm excited for you to finish it, mostly because it's such a fantastic game. I highly encourage you to not wait around for these two yeah. jokers that you're playing this game with. I am making you wait. I am a- amazed. And flabbergasted that nothing has been spoiled for me yet. Better hurry up because it's going to. I know. To. Someone's going to. This podcast is going to go up and immediately my Twitter feed is going to be a bunch of dicks. So. Just don't go on Twitter. Yeah. You know well, what? You Fine. Know, See you later. Really spoiler. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Goodbye, Twitter. Goodbye, Twitter. See um, you later. So what have you been playing then? Anything else? Anything else exciting? Um, I played. Because you've had some time. You've been away. Yeah. You had some downtime. You were, you know, doing some self-care. My hands didn't always work, though. Yeah. So there was yeah, a lot of hard. TV watching. What are you watching? You watch? Anything oh, that you'd be geez. like, RuPaul, you should watch this. this so amazing. much RuPaul's Drag Race. I, I back watched about six seasons. That's that a lot was of fun. dancing. That's a lot of dancing. I love RuPaul's Drag Race. A lot of wigs. A lot of wigs. I love RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm actually seeing uh, Bob the Drag Queen the day before my birthday later this month. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. She's here doing a show. I and then I'm seeing. Is, cool. Yeah. And then I'm seeing Trixie Mattel, who's like pretty popular in June in San Francisco. Nice. I know. And I'm just going to see them all in person. Um, drag shows are so much fun. I can't if wait. If you're in the San Francisco area, Asia SF is a pretty place. Yeah. Pretty great place to go. I went to Lennon, place to go. Arts, called Dirty Bitches. And it was the best show Oh, my show God. I've ever Dirty been. Bitches nice. is the oh, best name. So good. Um, <laughs> I have played. I think the, the game that I have played the most, and I know like since I've been gone, you know, Nino Kuni 2 came out. I immediately thought of 2 Steimer, don't worry. I did too. I didn't. Kelly Clarkson, never mind. <laughs> um, Kuni 2 came out. I got like a good chunk of the way in there, but between the castle building and the stuff, it's a little bit overwhelming. And then Far Cry came out. I played a bunch of Far Cry. I can talk about Far Cry, actually. Um, I played... Did you finish Far Cry? No. I played Lost Sphere, <sighs> which was that Tokyo RPG Factory game that came out in January. I'll give you my one-word review. It is not great. No. Yeah, that's what Britt said. It was very disappointing. Um, uh, Nino Kuni 2, I'm still like just completely mired in it. It's really cheerful and light and like just joyful. Feel good? Yeah. It's like, yeah. It, it's like a, it's a, it's a JRPG. Like it's the polar opposite of like Final Fantasy 15, which is all doom and gloom and black colors. And Nino Kuni is just bright and light and whatever. Vibrant and it's fun. And, yeah. It's, it's, it's nice. I really like it. I will probably go back in and finish it. Um, Far Cry 5, my big beef with Far Cry 5 is that I feel like I'm just, being like once I start really getting into the rhythm of the open world and like doing all the stuff I'm like yeah 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 I get kidnapped, kidnapped. yep and just like dragged somewhere the else the way they do the story elements in that game is really frustrating it it's super frustrating to me because if you're gonna be like here's this big old open world go do whatever you want and you need to move the narrative there are much better ways to coerce you to go where you need to go at a certain point without literally resting wrestling all control from you Yes. And it gets frustrating and I've actually, I put it down because I, it was like, I went back I was like, and no. finished it and I think you are okay just putting it down. Yeah. I was like, I can't, I can't be dragged. Like it's, it made me feel like I was not in control and it's a friggin' game. Yeah, I agree. So I just recently finished the faith portion of the game. Um, and you've done the John or the Jacob already? I did John first. Okay. So I haven't done Jacob John, yet. John, Jacob, Jacob. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I want to finish it, but I'm like, <sighs> yeah, no, I just like the thing that I keep coming back to is like, the reason I love booting up Far Cry is because I love shooting stuff. Yes. And the guns are fun in that game. Things. And the open world activities are a fun, a fun time waster and like just driving around and like doing little like um, liberating outposts and all that. It's fun. But it's then what out. happens is, is like when they try to force the story in, particularly Faith's whole storyline where you're in this like bliss world because you're like drugged out. I don't like how narratively it's just not connected. And like they expect you to take a leap into. A faith. <laughs> well, really, not, like, they are, you do. You well. take, not just like a not just like a, 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 you know, a metaphorical one. But it's like this idea that you're suspending your disbelief in such a way that like narratively you're just like going along with the fact that yes. you're that you're shooting somebody in a bliss dream. But really, you're shooting them in real life. And I'm just like, no, like you can't you didn't do it good enough. For me to believe this conceit. Yeah. There was, that's how I felt about most of the 
regions, not just faiths. Like you're expecting me and obviously, I guess we're, we're minor spoilers. I'm not going to say like exact plot points, but you're constantly getting abducted and you're like, yeah. how is this possible that you've kidnapped me like five times? Wouldn't you get smarter and be like, not today. Well, yeah. yeah. That's the thing is like you, you, you are, you control the deputy, but you never really feel like you're the deputy because you know what's going on when you're under this bliss, but you have no say over that. And at that point you feel like this character that you're supposed to be is not you because you're like, Hey, I'm under bliss right now. But also, like, if she's able to literally just drop you into a bliss whenever she wants, then what's the, you have no agency. And how do you Not keep escaping? That, like, how exactly? Like, what's more of like these people have you by the balls at all times, right? Like up until you take them out, and like you're just like how. How do they all not view you as a threat of any kind? Why wouldn't you just be like, I take you out, boom. Yeah. Yeah. The whole shtick with like it's weird with, with face area and the marshal and how that all plays out. I'm not going to spoil no. it, but like I, it was very fucking disappointing. I understand that like they probably had this concept of like, let's do Far Cry in a part of America, like hot button concept, blah, blah, blah. Let's do it. And I just feel like the story didn't deliver into that concept yes. in a really meaningful way. Right. And I just can't play a giant open world game. That'd be like playing Breath of the Wild and every like two hours, someone like dive bombs Link and drops you somewhere else on the opposite side of the map. It's incredibly frustrating. That's the it's annoying hard. part. It's like you're like, like especially because I'd be like, oh, I'm like gonna go do this thing. And but then, I know if I do this, I'm gonna get fucking a dump. But the, the yeah. more frustrating part is like you don't know when those times are gonna happen. Like it happens at random intervals when you get resistance points, not like at the like if it happened as you leveled. Yeah, that would make sense. It yes. doesn't. though. It doesn't. Because OK, then maybe my my entire game was a thing of coincidence, because I feel like every time I pass those little ticks in the resistance meter, I would get abducted. You you do at some point, but it's not like a because I feel like every time I would okay, an exact. I, think, I don't know what the number is uh -huh. that you need to hit, but it was just like a weird thing where like sometimes you'd be in the middle of the bar and then it would go up. But then you would still get and all right. I just I just can't. The first yeah. time it happened, I was like, I'm not going to let this. Oh, it was a story thing. And then the second time it happened, I was like, oh, I must be doing something wrong. I'm not going to let this happen again. And then the third time it happened, I was like, well, shame on me. I guess this, I guess I'm doing something wrong. And then it, I'm just like, stop. You're like, no, that's just the story. Yeah. That's just the game. Too many times. Too many yeah. times. They basically um, screw with you the entire time. Far Cry. And then you're like, LOL. I kill you. Far Cry. And then, Far Cry. Yeah. 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 So like, again, the game is very fun from a gameplay perspective, but narratively it felt it falls very short i was not impressed no no but i also went back and finished that game after finishing god of war that's what i did and too. it was real hard so <laughs> that was that was a major bummer um yeah. after because like i was kind of i was like okay like i kind of this is fine like as i was playing and i just had done faith's region and i had done a little bit of i believe jacobs um and again constantly getting kidnapped was like I roll central, but I was still okay with it. But then after, after coming back, I was forcing myself through that story. Sorry, Alexa, we totally hijacked. No, it's fine. Oh, like I might go back to Far Cry. I don't know if I will. I have like 10 other unfinished games. If yeah. you've done one region, you've experienced Far Cry 5. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I want to know what happens, but I also don't want to get kidnapped again. I'm sure there's a variety of YouTube videos yeah. that I can watch. That oh, yeah. Can um, watch that will tell you what happens at the end of Far Cry. Yeah. Um, Brittany. Yes. Speaking of going back, way, way back, <sighs> to Neverwinter Nights. Oh, my, my God. God, girl. So what What? What was the genesis? What possessed you? What What wild hair got up you bo your booty to be your like, booty, I want to go booty. back to this game? I finished a game called God of War, and that game is such a masterpiece that I'm like, anything I try to hop into right now, I can't do it. And that's just kind of been how I've operated. If I play a game I really, really enjoy it, I have to do something so drastically different that there won't be any comparison, which is why it took me at least a week to hop back into Far Cry 5. So never went That nights. would have been smarter for me. I went, I finished it on Friday and then went, nope, like, the next day nope, before. Jason's like, let's play Far Cry. I'm like, nope, we're playing fucking Neverwinter Nights. So that game, the Enhanced Edition came out, I want to say in March. 
And I love old CRPGs. There's something super warm and fuzzy, fuzzy about them, nostalgic about them. I love that you can build a gimped character and then it's your fucking fault. Nowadays, I feel like when you when it comes to game, when was the last game you played where you feel like you can truly customize your character? In the sense, you level up, you get attri- attribute points, you can do their strength, defense, dexterity, mana, wisdom, intelligence. And the reason I think a lot of those games these days don't do that is because you can build a gimped character and there's respecking, obviously, but then, you know, then the game could be broken and you might get frustrated. You might leave it. So, uh, that's something I love about Ashron's call that MMO, that rip in peace. Um, I like that you're like, I like that you can make that you can basically because I get feel, totally and that's, fucked that's over. one of the reasons why I stopped playing World of Warcraft is because I felt like my character was too streamlined. I would level up and I would do the grinding, but I feel like there were millions of other characters that were just like mine because I feel like there was no personalization anymore. Anywho, so we're playing this game and I love it's a learn. There's a lot of a learning curve because I didn't really grow up with games like this, but it's something through Divinity Original Sin that I learned that I really, really enjoy these kind of games. So when you say these kind of games, you mean like deep RPG Old RPGs. So like Baldur's Gate, Neverwinter Nights, like the old school shit. Um, and Jason and I are playing the game and we're like, what the hell are we? You know, you have... Uh, what platform are you playing on? PC. Okay. So um, we're playing and we're like, okay, so we kind of get the gist of it. He's playing a mage. I'm playing a warrior. Warriors are pretty melee, pretty straightforward, but mages usually have some weird like gimmicks to them. So we're like, what the hell do we do? How do we play this? And it's this weird thing where every time he casts a spell... He has to rest in game. There's no mana regen, which is kind of odd. And there's no... I At mean, all? There's no potions? There's no nothing? It's the kind of thing where you, you cast a spell, and I'm only like 10 hours into this, so I could be wrong. Sorry. Uh, where you cast a spell, and then in order to gain access to that spell again, you have to rest in game, which oh, means so you have like to find a safe space. Oh. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's a and d game. So, okay. like, your weapons are like 1d6, 1d10, 1d... Got it. Um... And so I was so like, you have like I, one like spell slots for like, so you have like X amount of level one spells, X amount. Yes, of Yes, okay. exactly. 100%. Okay, okay, okay. You get it. You Got get it. it. Uh, and so I'm like, you know, I don't really understand what we're doing. It's kind of hard to find good guides online because, you know, it's a thing. And most of the guides are broken because they're all like flash sites. I don't longer exist. Oh, so oh, oh, RP. I went up. I went upstairs to my game library. Andrea, you've seen this room. It's where all my games are on display. Which one? I'm sorry. <clears throat> It's true. Uh, which room? What, what, what the, you the have one like, that has the You have like five of those rooms in your house? The hardwood floor and there's nothing, nothing in yeah. it. <laughs> Do you have like an I, entire I, floor? I joke of... lovingly because it's Brittany true. has a very impressive collection of not only video games, but video game paraphernalia. Like there's just like, and I thought it was just one room. And then she's like, oh wait, no, there's another room. Oh wait, no, there's another oh room. When I was at your old place, there was only one room. Yeah. She's got a big old house now. now she's got, yes. well, she had a house then too, but it was a different it's, house. It's a little crazy. So I used to do a lot of garage sales back in the day when I had the time to spend my Ooh, weekends. I love doing garage. a I good that. yard sale. I lo- we, can we go yard sailing together? It's oh my literally God. like my favorite what? hobby. You want to come, you want to go yard sale trolling with us? Oh what? My, I get nothing. Have you, you ever so much been pleasure. to a yard sale? Yes. It's all garbage. <gasps> yes. No. How dare you? Whoa. I don't have the patience okay, to sit Alexa through Alexa and other I will go stuff. and like get mimosas yeah and we'll go sit somewhere else. petties i will go with you Brittany. thank you so i went upstairs to my game room and i found mm-hmm. a copy of neverwinter nights the original pc edition that i got at garage probably 10 years ago and out i whipped the guide that came with it and so i was That's able hilarious. to oh yeah i was oh. able to go through it and we learned how to cast spells like what you have to do oh, and there's paper guides I, it's mm-hmm. a little it's one of the little guides like yay big you know and it's just i love it it makes me feel warm and fuzzy it, it's the kind of thing where you it's like the old Dragon Age, Dragon Age Origins. Yeah, 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 The way it plays. And in the sense, like, you talk to someone, you have five different li- d- lines of dialogue. You have a journal with, like, ten different quests at once. It's all text-based. There is some voice acting. Lots of inventory management. And it's just one of those feel-good games that I think I really needed because it's hard to play anything after God of War. Yeah. It really is, yeah. yeah. I am just going to take that disc and hide. Go away. Forget yeah. it. Go away. I forget it. it, everybody. The Goodbye forever. The paper manual thing made me think of no, 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 no. when it used to be a feasible thing to DRM via a paper manual. You know? Like, like there was something in the manual that you needed in order to complete the game. Yep. I don't but, remember that. So that no. happened with Quest for Glory. And in, um, I believe it's 4. Quest for Glory 4. They have... There's a specific part of the game where you go to, like, a mad scientist. And he asks you the recipe for these fake elements and you have, and it's, and it's like, there's earth, um, wind, and fire? water, no, oh. and pizza. 
pizza what? is the last element. Oh, I thought we were doing some like Power Rangers shit. No, I no, was no. thinking more of like, you know, the, 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 the amazing R- R&B musical group. Um, no, 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 pizza? no. Pizza, <laughs> pizza is the last pizza. element. And so like, and there's all these different combinations. And in the manual, it had the answers for all of these things. But so like you couldn't just, da- if you just downloaded the game off the internet, you would get to that point of the game and not be able to finish. That's crazy. Devious. Um, but that, and then Earth- obviously now you can like, just put that shit on that, the internet. That Earth, Wind, and Fire uh, bit we just did made me think of something that we left out of the spoiler cast. Um, one of the puzzles in God of oh. War. Oh. That I wish we would have talked about. Is there it pizza? Such, it was such a nice moment that I was like, this is really clever. I really like it. I do remember that moment. Um, we'll talk about it yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Um, Brittany. Yeah. How long are you going to be playing Neverwinter Nights for? I plan to play it for quite a while. Quite a while. Um, till Detroit comes out. That's a, that is like, that's like four weeks. Yeah. When is it coming out? When is what? Detroit? Detroit's Detroit. like May 25th, I believe. The end mm-hmm. of May. And oh. Save the K2 is coming out. Um, you know, until then, I'm kind of like, what do I play? Nino Kuni 2, I, I also plan to play. But Jason and I always like to have one co-op game going. And now that we finished Far Cry 5, we finished A Way Out. I'm like, let's do Neverwinter Nights. Why not? Tell us the story of A Way Out. Wait, have you you haven't have you played yet? Have not played yet. Nope. Nope. Do you want to play it with me? Sure. Okay, good. Because yeah. I don't have anyone to play with. <laughs> yeah, I'll play it with you. <laughs> Yay! I it, Listen, and like uh, you guys obviously heard my story about the game awards and all that. I'm not holding my one experience with one creator of that game against the game. I'm definitely down to try it. I've heard good things about it. I want to experience this unique co-op. Um, would you recommend it? Yeah. I, it's not one Done. of those games I'm I'm super like, oh my god, it was so good. Jason, I think, liked it a lot more than I did. Um, but it's a unique-esque experience, and I would love to do a spoiler cast on it, actually. It's one of those things I don't want to talk too much about. Maybe six to eight What's hours. What's super narrative-based? Yeah. There's no inventory. The only HUD you have is sometimes you have ammo. Sometimes it will tell you your objective. And, you yeah, you have to play with another person. And... It's very story driven, narrative based experience. I would say kind of like Heavy Rain because that, that was the last uh, Quantic Dream game mm-hmm. I played. It's like that, but co op and more uh, adventurous. I would say. Does it branch mm. in the way Heavy Rain does, or no? It's more linear. Oh, it's one hundred percent linear. You can make this because you have the two characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each have their very distinct personalities. As you pr- progress through the game, you will come across. You want to do it Leo's way or Vincent's way. One's Paragon, one's Renegade. Got it. Think of it that way. Uh, that does not have an impact on the story. There is a decision you make that is like, mm, but you know, that's the spoiler cast thing. Sure. Um, but does it, I guess I'm asking, are there multiple different endings or is there, or is it made? There, there, with there like are. Variation, slight variation. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Cool. Interesting. Um, how's um, how's Fire Emblem Heroes going there, oh, Miss no. Alexa Ray? How much money have you spent, girl? I want to talk about it. Hey, <laughs> yeah, hey, listen. When I talked about my Pokemon Go experience, you were like, "Oh my god!" But I'm every, sure you're not far behind. Every time, I think like so. They they've been routinely updating the story. So maybe like once a month, there's like a bunch of new story stuff and not whatnot, which is actually pretty cool. But uh, just when I think I'm like, you know what? I think I'm good. I've got my team of four Takumis now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Those are your host bando. <laughs> there are three different kinds. There's the normal Takumi. There's the possessed Takumi, which was really hard to get. You had to beat some special map on lunatic mode to get him. And he was rare. And then the um, the New Year's version of Takumi, Takumi Prince of Soup, who throws dumplings. Oh, Prince Wait, of Soup. Prince of Soup. Wow. And he throws what dumplings. What does the New Year's one look like? He's in a kimono. It's like a classic. Oh, cool. Kimono. Which is your favorite Takumi? Soup. Uh, Throwing dumplings. One of them was going to bend you over while you made them a oh sandwich. Oh, my God. Or do them he could feed you dumplings. This escalated very well, quickly. No, this was one of our, was it a secret segment or exclusive videos? Husbandos. Yeah, it was a husband yeah. segment. Yeah. It was a secret segment. I don't segment. know. They're all like just the same dude. One is angry and another one has soup. One has food, oh. Alexa. One has food. The one with the food, yes, obviously. Yes, this is what I'm saying. You yeah. won't the, the one food. with the food. <laughs> the one with the food. Um. But yeah, like, jo- I, like, and I named my team because there's a joke in the Fire Emblem community that com- community that Takumi's hair looks like a pineapple. So the name of my team is Pineapples. <laughs> and I'm really okay, excited. Then. They're all level 40. They're all doing great. It's awesome. Just when I think I'm like, I'm just going to play the story. I'm not going to spend any more money on heroes. You can accrue orbs for logging in every day or like special events. I'm like, I'm just going to use the free stuff. I'm not going to spend any more money. They drop 
a new round of heroes and I'm just like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I need them. I need them. What was it today? I Will logged in today. Your friends? I logged in today. I haven't played it in a couple days and I logged in today and there was a new summon event and I was like, Oh, I'm just going to check out and see who's here. And it's like all the kids from Fire Emblem Fates, including the avatar characters kid. Oh. Who's like super duper? You played Fates, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kana, it's yeah. a it's female Kana, and I was just like, I I clearly need her, and then I spent sixty dollars. See, I still don't have her. Sixty dollars. <laughs> I, I need to stop. Now you it's understand. It's bad. They're totally. I don't want to say they're cosmetic items because all of them. It's like there's a team building aspect. You need you know ranged people, sword people, all that but stuff have to build out your the team. Same dude. Yes, and they're all ranged, and I'm doing okay. But, like, but, but like, I just, I don't, I can't quit. I don't I know what's wrong with me. You. I can't. It's like. That's how I felt with Pokemon Go. I can't. I can't. But you did eventually. Yeah, because the game got too goddamn repetitive. And I had to yeah, Pokemon. but then when they drop the new stuff, whenever the new stuff is, you're going to be like, no, they've, goodbye I mean, forever. they dropped new Pokemon, but no new Pokemon spawn around my house. Well, I'm one like, of the, yeah, one of the mm, big differences, yeah, though, I think, uh, between these two games, that one requires you to, like, walk outside. Yeah, I don't and walk outside. Yeah, I would I walk can play outside, in bed. but I can spawn. play while I wait for whoever I'm out eating with is in the bathroom. I can play in the bathroom. Like, yes, you can. Whatever. And I don't have to walk anywhere to make it happen. It's just That's all true. there. I don't know. Something's got to give. You know, I really if it need gives to stop. You, if it gives you joy and happiness and you're able I to I mean, no, it brings me anger and frustration because okay, it takes well, me so. You know what? There that goes. The, the, the percentage of the respawn rate is so bad. There was an event where they bumped up the bumped up the um god i almost said catch rate bumped up the the draw rate for like a small amount of time and that's when i got my fourth takumi because i was yeah. just like need it was that your um, sloop dumpling takumi no the oh, last one i got was one? a second of the original oh so i've got two ogs I want well i know that dumplings. feeling that feeling of frustration and anger i know you do yeah you do you know why because you play all of those things like paragon and destiny and Oh and boy. and other games that the game that shall not be mad. named it's it's the final fucking day today is the death day d day of a game that i spent hundreds of hours weeks days dollars nights months, early months, mornings years weekends um when did it come out and it's only in beta right um it never yeah, made so it out of beta still technically in open beta when uh it, it went into alpha in 2016. Oh, jeez. And then it was in beta in 2017. That is a short life. And now it's done. Uh, so Paragon, the multiplayer online battle arena game from Epic Games, <laughs> uh, they have decided to release $12 million worth of assets and wow, uh, no. development tools for the game onto their platform. Anybody who wants to develop on Unreal Engine can have access to those to assets. To the lady That's Faye awesome. with her fire boobs. Yes, Ooh, the Faye. Fire uh, one of my favorite casters, a, a mid laner. She's great. So uh, this week I've jumped back in just as like a goodbye, like a fond farewell uh, to a game that I spent a lot of time with and really enjoyed. It's, it's, it's very bittersweet is what I wrote on Twitter because on one hand, um, the game clearly still has a lot of issues that never got worked out because, you know, they really shifted quite quickly um, the team working on Paragon over to the, t uh, over to the Fortnite team because they clearly needed lots of help. Um, and then, you know, sweet in the sense that, like, I remembered everything I loved about it. And, and Brittany was here with me this week watching me play uh, the first night before Steimer came into town. And, I, like, she was like, no, tell me about it. And I was like... I hadn't gotten to nerd out about Paragon in a really long time. And I thought that I was like boring you to death, like telling you about all these characters and the things. And, and Steimer, of course, knows how MOBAs work. So like she, of course, picked up the gameplay like really quickly. But we played it on the after hour stream this week. And I just like there's something about MOBAs that is so addictive. And there anybody who's play who plays MOBAs understands this is why people put 2,000 hours into League, into Dota, into Smite, uh, you know, whatever Dota or whatever, excuse me, MOBA of your choice is, you know, that there's something about the gameplay, about the cooperative elements, plus the competitive elements, the objective based parts of it and the really diverse heroes and how you can kind of really find 
where your role is, mm-hmm. whether you're an aggressive player or you're a defensive player, or you like to support people. And that's what's really awesome about the genre. And I never knew that I liked MOBAs until I played Paragon. And I, I can forever be grateful for Epic for making a, a MOBA that really spoke to me. And like a lot of people have reached out to me to say, if you really liked Paragon, you should try Smite right. because it's like the one that's like the closest in style mm. uh, from a third person perspective, like the camera angle uh, graphically. It's like, it's similar instead of like the kind of top down feel you get from like League and Dota. Um, but you know, I'm not sure if I want to get into another MOBA um, if, if I have the bandwidth. Because I spent so many hours learning. Even just trying to show Brittany. She was like, there's just so much happening. There's so much. But it was so cool. Because I think it was the first time I've ever seen you truly in your element when it comes to a game. Where you're not critiquing a game. Where you're not reporting on a game. You were just such a hardcore fan. And when you would talk about something, you would talk about so much passion and energy and obviously, if this game brought you that much joy and there's an opportunity for another game to bring you as much joy, maybe in Smite, you have to do it. I could just tell the way you talked about it. And you're like, okay, I'm like, what the fuck are these 100,000 things? You're like, well, I can tell you everything about these 100,000 things. And like, <laughs> off he would go. And it was entertaining to watch. Why, thank you. And it's, it's certainly rewarding getting to know that system. But the process can sometimes be challenging, particularly if the tools aren't that great. Um, the community, of course, is really who shines in, in really the 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 moments where you're like, OK, I need to find a build like a deck build for Feng Mao if I'm playing him as an offlaner or whatever. You know, like if you even know like what any of those words mean, like you understand what I'm saying. It's like this idea, like the the intricacy of the gameplay mechanics becomes so specific that you have to s- literally study study like hit points and study uh Mm -hmm. um you know refresh times and study like dps for different abilities and who matches up against you and how certain abilities are affected by certain items and like that's why mobas are so satisfying and why something like the international is such a huge event and has the largest purse in esports history and really largest purse in competitive sports i think the maybe only event that trumps them right now is the super bowl and like that's like kind of bananas to think about right yeah, but like it's very bananas that's why people are passionate is because there's and that's really what, what it boils down to i think is a, a snapshot of the camaraderie of video games as a whole and why we as mm-hmm. gamers really have such a tight-knit community is this idea that like there's this thing that we're gonna learn together this quantitative thing that what jared was talking about when he was on the show about like it's mathematical, it's skill based, and like you, there's a very finite and specific way to win at these games, and because of that, like learning what that means is something that we do together and we share as gamers or fans of a specific type of game, and div- it, it creates this camaraderie in this community that's unlike any other medium out there, and I think that's what we really love and why gamers are so passionate. Yeah, I uh, the past couple weekends I've gone to video game tournaments in Seattle. Two weeks ago, I went to the Halo event, and then last weekend, I went to the Call of Duty event, and I've been to Evo, and it's just like walking into those rooms where there's these tournaments being held, the energy is so electric, and the first time, I'm like, there's no way I can sit down for five hours and watch people play fucking Smash Brothers. I sat down for like six and and a half hours because it went long because there were some technical difficulties. Love you, Evo. But I never- We we know all about that. (laughs) Never, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Never once was I complaining. I was so excited to be there. And you're right. It's the energy and the fact that everyone is, we all get it and we're all bonding over it and we all understand what's happening. And I feel like that doesn't happen. I mean, it happens with real sports. But like you said, like the Super Bowl is kind of like the next biggest thing. You know, it's it's pretty remarkable what the gaming industry has mm-hmm. accomplished through esports. It's pretty amazing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But um, thank you, Epic, for making Paragon. Thank you for making all the assets free. I think that that is the most noble of things you can do. I'm so glad that you did it. And, like, I know that I can, like, get on a high horse and be like, you have so much money, you should do it anyway. But a lot of game development companies would never even dream of releasing their IP in that way. And I think that I'm really you know, hopeful that somebody from the community is going to make something cool with them. Yes. And uh, if nothing else, please just make some Fortnite skins. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that would be fun. Um, Of of the Paragon characters, because why not? You make a ton of Fortnite assets. So I've I've lost the game. Oh, no. (laughs) What's happening? Background music for her goodbye. 
So oh. I've lost I've lost Asheron's call. You're losing Paragon. What's fucking next? Samra's not losing Guild Wars. She'll be fine. No, that'll be fine. <sighs> I was going to play Sarah McLaughlin's Arms of the Angels, but I didn't want to no. go that far. No, it's no this fine. is good. This is good. Yeah, if I had a lighter, I would light it up. Um, if I had anything left in my drink, I would maybe pour some out. No, I wouldn't, because there's a lot of electrical Pour it out into your there's mouth. There's a lot of electrical cables on the ground here. Pour it out um, in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's been, it's been good. Yeah. And rip in peace, Paragon. Rip in peace. Yeah. Join my, my bro astronauts call in the fiery depths of video, video game, game, game hell. hell. I don't know that they would go to hell. No, no, no. That wasn't the but right. Just the video game afterlife. afterlife. I already committed to video it. Video so game I afterlife. afterlife. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. At least you have your assets. I have nothing. It's true. Yeah. You have your rings. It's true. It's true. All and right, ladies memories. and gentlemen, on that note, we're going to wrap up this segment. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to find out how space was. Oh, Jesus. From Miss Alexa Ray. Space. It's uh, and we also, as promised, this can, the last second is probably going to be a long one. Um, Lex Ray brought a notebook, you guys. Full. It's of a Kingdom Hearts pattern oh notebook. My God, it's Details. A notebook. Because yes. we have been talking forever. Yes. About wanting to get the Alex Ray definitive way to play the Kingdom Hearts series. So I have to pee before we do this. Yes, this it's going to be. It's going to be great. <laughs> Stick with us. Take a pre break yourself. Get another drink. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you took a nice little rest there. We have refilled our beverages uh, because you're going to strap in. We've got a three-pronged approach. Shit. To Ooh. this third segment. Well, it's like two prong, two and a half prongs. Two and a half. Yeah, two and a half prongs. That sounds right. 2.5 HD remix prongs. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Oh. Final chapter prologue? Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we'll get to Kingdom Hearts in just a moment. But um, a lot of people have tweeted to us at what's good underscore games. They've left comments at youtube.com slash what's good games, at facebook.com slash what's good games. They've sent us emails. They've sent us Patreon messages, all being like, how is Alexa Ray doing? And we've always just continued to say she's doing well. In outer space. But you're back now. From outer space. From outer space. just walked in to find you with that set look, look on my face. face. I should have changed. No. Stupid well, like, like, I, I, I thought we were doing, you doing the thing. I it was more like thing. a look of terror as they burst into the room during the streams. Oh, my God. It's very true. It, it was, was a amazing. surprise for sure. I mean, obviously, you and I had spoken. And you knew I was I coming. I thought that, you know, I kind of, I thought I knew when you were coming over. Nope. But then you like burst in and there was like a loud bang and we were not ready and it was a fun moment. You were also holding ready. Silent Hill, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I was. Yeah, <laughs> Silent Hill 2 actually. Perfect. Um, Girl. If you guys missed it, uh, we have a clip of it on our Twitter page. So yes. what's good underscore games. Check that out. Um, but you're back. It's so great to, that we get to see you and get to hang out with you and talk about games. Yeah. So, um, so how have you been, friend? What, what was going on with you for these last couple of months? Well, you all know, but I'm telling the story for you guys listening at home. Um, strap in, like Andrea said, this is a little bit of an involved story. Um, it is a story about self-care and about taking care of yourself and all this shit that nobody likes to talk about because it makes them sound weak. Uh, I'm talking to all of you out there. So for those of you who do not know, two years ago, this is all connected, two years ago, actually two years to the day from this past Monday, April 23rd. I was in a bar in Boston at a game event during PAX and a sign fell on my head. Uh, I got a concussion. It was very bad. Uh, we just confirmed recently that that is totally healed, which is really awesome. It takes Yay. like two years to heal concussions. Um, but a lot of other weirdo complications came with it. Like I didn't fall and like my neck absorbed the impact and my back got all screwed up. I actually have two bulging discs and a herniated disc in my back that I'm currently getting worked on. I actually shrank an inch. What? That's crazy. I used to be 5'5". Five five, I'm now 5'4". Wow. Okay. I know. I shrank an inch. It's great. Uh, great. And I had really bad shoulder complications. My shoulder was all banged up and whatever. So I, you know, had my concussion time. I was off work for like two months. Went back to work. Uh, I was at GameSpot at the time and like didn't really feel quite right after that. And then decided like I don't want to do this anymore. And then got a job at Crunchyroll doing like brand stuff. And I was like, sure, whatever. And then a couple of months later, 
uh, in the spring in rapid succession, uh, my father had a heart attack. He's totally fine now. He had a heart attack and had to have a quadruple bypass. My family's in Connecticut. So I had to fly home the same week that I had to move. And then literally when I got back from being home with my family, I was told that I was being laid off. So it's like everything happening at once, all these bad things happening. And I was like, well, this has been a crazy weird life. Um, and I was unemployed for a couple months and then I got the job at Wikia in August or whatever, and things started rolling in. I hadn't been feeling right physically or mentally by the time October came around for about six months. Like I got E. coli poisoning in May. I was starting to just feel not right. I was feeling, I was really easily irritated. And I started having for the first time in my life, like panic attacks, like real panic attacks. Um, if you never had a panic attack, it's very confusing because they manifest differently for different people. And for me, it was like all 23 feet of my intestine. And I went to the ER and they showed me the ultrasound it was, I will mm, creepy, creepy. Um, like, like a snake, like all 23 feet of my intestines were crunching and my, I couldn't, I couldn't lay flat. I couldn't curl up. Um, it was just so painful and I was nauseous and I had vertigo and I had tunnel vision and my, my heart was racing and I was panting and I would, this would happen to me. Um, it started happening around the E. coli poisoning. So I assumed like, oh, maybe I still have E. coli poisoning or maybe my stomach is now fucked up forever because you had an E. coli poisoning thing and it changes your gut flora forever. Yes. So I was like, I'm fine. It's something with my gut. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay, whatever. But it kept happening. And then in October when I was gone for a couple of weeks, I had like what I like to, what I like to refer to now affectionately as the tremor. I had like a really bad panic attack. I was in a lot of pain. I realized I had to go back to physical therapy um, for all of this stuff because I we couldn't pin. I, I hadn't seen a doctor in a while. I didn't know what had moved or to pinpoint whatever, but I was so busy and I had so much going on and I had so much I had to do. I was like, I'll, I'll get to this. I'll get to this. I have stuff I have to do. I'll have to, I'll get to this later. Um, and, you know, I took a little break and I came back. And then in January, I just had, I had the earthquake. I had a total meltdown and it wasn't like a, I wasn't, it's like when you think meltdown, you don't think like, oh, I'm laying on the floor screaming, crying, and like I, everything burned to the ground. It was just like I got up that morning and I looked in the mirror and I was just like, this cannot go on one, this cannot go on one more day. So I took a leave of absence from literally everything. I wasn't working with fandom. I wasn't here with you guys. I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't on Twitter. Um, I apologize for anyone I might have worried. I just thought that a total backed off approach would have worked really well. Um, and for the most part, it did. Uh, I, you know, started physical therapy again. I'm really happy to report that after three months, my shoulder actually works like a shoulder now, Yay. which is great. Um, my back and my neck were working on. The good news is that there's nothing, what they thought was going on was that something was jamming into my spinal cord. There's something wrong with my spine because once they started working on my back, I started getting the shooting pains down my arms and like my, I was losing the ability to grip with my hand and stuff was falling out of my hands and I, I still do it, but I was sleeping with these like sleeve, like these giant full arm sleeve mittens that just isolate your body and you, and I can't like scratch or do anything. Or like whatever. Barbie hands. Yeah. I had Barbie hands when I went to bed because they couldn't figure out what it was. So they were like, well, just isolate your arms and we'll figure it out. And we figured it out that it was all of this back here, pinching nerves. And because it's your neck, it's like your upper neck. And then I've got the herniated disc down here. They can't like beat it up like they did my shoulder. Like they beat the shit out of my shoulder. I had black and like it was black and blue from them just like jamming into my shoulder blade and poking me and whatnot. But they can't because it's your spine. So it's probably going to be another 12 months, like maybe once or twice a week. Yeah, you don't fuck with your spine. It. No. And I did, if you guys get the opportunity, uh, try stem therapy. That's the electrotherapy where they put the electrodes on you and it taps. I love it so much. It's so nice. Um, but the thing about chronic pain when you're someone who has your body has always worked for you and you've always been on top of your game and you was, you've always been able to run around 24 seven and have all this energy and get every done and see everything you have to do when something stops working the way that it should be working and you're trying to sort of push ahead like it's still totally functioning um, and not really doing anything about what's going on here. It really weighs on you. And there's a really, really long history of studies that I read because I am a perfectionist and have to read up about my anomaly, my maladies and sort of figure them from the inside out. Um, long history of chronic pain tied to chronic anxiety problems and 
stuff like that. And I never really, I never had anxiety problems prior to my concussion. And like, there's a total, you know, total chance that that knock on the head, it was like an inch from the top of my head, but that knock on the head changed me a little, changed my personality a little bit, a little bit. Um, but I, you know, started seeing a psychiatrist and started therapy. I love ther therapy, highly advocate therapy. It's really nice to talk to someone who doesn't have an emotional investment in you. Uh, really good to put things into perspective. But I uh, have panic disorder. And panic disorder is when you have panic attacks when you are not panicking. So if you think of a panic attack as the base biological function of, oh my God, there's a bear, I have to go. I don't, I mean, we can't talk to any of our ancestors to verify any of this, but the thing is. Was that Kumahime? Kumahime. My, yeah. my ancestor, Kumahime, um, <laughs> with the bears, uh, the bears uh, in the mountain. Uh, you, the fight or flight response is, you know, your abdomen, your, um, my abdomen, your intestinal system, your digestive system stops working or just clenches up because it's getting ready for you to run. It stops all digestive function so all your blood can go to your muscles so you can fucking run away from a bear uh the the nausea i guess you throw up on yourself you don't taste or smell as good so a predator is less likely to like eat you if you smell like bark. sounds right it also empties you of weight so you can run tunnel vision is when you're running when you're running you don't need anything here you're just running and the heart racing the sweating the excessive sweating um, the anxiety sweating, all of that is tied into, well, I am getting ready to literally burst into a sprint and run. Well, it is 2018 and there's not, you know, your boss isn't a bear who's going to come and eat you if you don't hand in that report. Well, it's just a person. Maybe if you're boo-boo. Yeah, if you're boo-boo, you got that problem. What if you work for Hannibal Lecter? You got to work for Yogi. <laughs> right. But most of us most of us work in like office buildings with little desks and cubicles. True. And like, yes. there's a lot of like, like, yeah, it's 2018. We work in a really high pressure industry. There's a lot of pressure to be on all the time, especially as someone who's in front of a camera a lot. And just that that push to like, you have to you have to keep pushing no matter what's going on. You have to keep pushing. And like, yes, I fully advocate, like, keep calm and carry on, like, keep your head held high, like, keep going. Uh, don't give up. But if there's something wrong and you n have that feeling something's wrong, please go take care of it. Because I didn't take care of this for so long and it literally completely blew up my life and disrupted it. So I took time off um, with the panic stuff. You There's a certain kind of therapy where you basically induce the symptoms of a panic attack and then learn to disassociate them. So like I'll spin in a circle for two minutes and get really dizzy and then just remind myself I'm in a room spinning in a circle. Nothing is wrong. This isn't so bad. Like I literally have to get over being nauseous, get over being um, the abdominal cramping and stuff like that. That's a little harder, but... Um, yeah, so it's a lot of work, and I'm not, I haven't had a panic attack in like a month. That's great. It's, which is the longest, you. which it's, it's working, which is the longest I've gone without having one. And then that's why I'm like, I'm ready to go rejoin the living. But I am, but that's where I was, and that's why I wasn't here. That's why I wasn't doing anything. I am, I don't feel, in the beginning, I felt like I was weak because I literally had to step away from everything and like, go in the corner and just figure everything out and all of that stuff. But I don't feel weak anymore now that I'm on the other side of it, because I realized if I hadn't taken that time to, you know, stop panicking about everything and sort of realign my, realign my personal, like personal health priorities to fix all of that now, I would probably still be in like my little, like you guys came and visited me during GDC and I had my little sh Laura Croft shoulder brace strapped <laughs> over my boobs. It was really weird. Um, I'd still be slapping on icy hots and going out into the world and being tired and cranky and going home and like, just like panicking for no reason and like being upset at every little thing. Um, and I don't want to say like, I'm totally cured because it's not that kind of thing, but I am... Um, I'm way better and everything is easier. And I see like the light at the end of the tunnel. And I realized, you know, I wrote about this in my book, Kingdom Hearts 2, um, where I'm talking about Riku, who in the first game is a villain because he falls to the darkness because he wants so bad to push ahead to, to achieve this thing. He kind of lets himself and his priorities and his values and how much he values himself as a person go. It's all targeted towards this goal. And by the time we get to, you know, 
the latest game in the series, I think that he was in, which was Dream Drop Distance over, you know, the past 15 years. Um, it's not that he's gone through, you know, he's, he's come back, he's mastered, he's hidden himself. He hid himself away for a long time because he didn't want his friends to see him like this. They didn't want, he didn't want his friends to see him, you know, dark, like having this darkness in him. But he learns that, you know, that darkness doesn't make him broken. He's just a little more complex and he harnesses it um, into a power and it becomes, and he accepts it and it becomes a part of him. And he uses that new power and that new knowledge to help the people around him. So like my own like shit aside, I hope that I can recoup this a little bit and reach all of you guys out there who are listening to this. I know a lot of you've written into me with, you know, like I suffer from anxiety too. Like I, you know, have really bad problems with this. Like don't feel like, don't feel like you're weak and don't feel like you're broken. You've just got a little more stuff to deal with. And please, for the love of God, if you feel like you like go and find some help, like it doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you, you know, weird or anything. Like it's totally freaking normal. And also like, with the thing with mental, mental health, it's like, if you had a broken bone, you'd go to the ER immediately. So if you're not feeling okay and you feel like there's something that you need to work through, go to the emotional equivalent of an ER, find a therapist, find a psychiatrist, you know? And I have, and I am so grateful for the specialists that I've been working with and so grateful to these girls for giving me time and sticking by me and, you know, you know, like checking in and whatnot. And it's just been like this really crazy journey and I wouldn't have, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I did it. And obviously I missed all of you, but, um, that's where I was. <laughs> and there's no doubt that we all missed you too. I mean, we got tons of people asking about you and after you. And, and, and of course, like, please take Alexa's message to heart about, please, please, please. If you're struggling with things, we get people that write into us all the time talking about, you know, the issues that they're facing and, we did a lot of work early in what's good yeah. games is life cycle with, with take this.org and like they do really important work. And mm -hmm. if you guys are ever struggling, if you have questions or even if you know somebody that's struggling or has questions, they are a fantastic resource. Oh yeah. Um, to reach out to and with people who have stories, who people, other gamers that, you know, also have similar hobbies and passions and that can speak the language with you. If you, mm -hmm. if you maybe don't know quite how to express yourself, they maybe be able to, you know, understand you better than if you're just cold calling another office, they might be a good first step and then they can hopefully refer you to somebody yeah. that can get you the specialized care that maybe you need. And, um, we just are so glad that you're doing better. This, th the world is a stressful, weird, crazy place. Like it's such a different world from when, like, I know a lot of people maybe have parents or, or friends or whatever that sort of look down on like, Oh, mental, mental wellness isn't a thing. You just put your head down and you push through like, we are, we are in a much different world and I just, I don't want to see anybody like we don't have to suffer because of it. Like suffering is not, it's like, it doesn't come with the territory. Like go talk to someone. And even if you just like, maybe don't really think you have something that's bothering you, but just want to go talk to a therapist or something do like, who knows? Like I, yeah, no, like I'm, I technically yeah. don't have anything really going on, but like it's so I, good. going to therapy is, is an incredible way to yeah. keep your mental health. Like, it's, Balance, just, it's just yeah. like going like exercising or something or like, like going to you're taking care of your, your body you're taking care of your mind yeah and you know again um i wrote about it in my book if you want to read it but i uh, i really i just think it's so so important and it was one of those things where it's like i'm an like i'm an advocate for this but i'm like you know i want everyone to be okay but i'm fine i'm fine and then there was just a day where i was like you're a freaking liar you're not fine get thee to a all of the all of them physical the therapy therapy Henry. everything yeah <laughs> but it's been great and like I just I just feel like I I feel like I have a new like I feel like I'm feeling like the person I was prior to that stupid accident and like my body's getting there like my neck is another story but whatever like maybe I'll get my robot parts in like 10 years <laughs> um, bodies can, I still are, want the robot are parts of amazing healing yeah bodies are capable of amazing healing and like so are you you don't have to be sad you don't have to be you know, troubled, like there are, there are other people out there like you and there are people out there who can help and it doesn't have to be this big grandiose process. You don't have to do what I did and literally blow up your life and shut the door and walk away from literally everyone and everything for three months. It could be just, I'm going to try doing something once a week. I'm going to try, you know, doing this and yeah, like I can tell you it's going to be okay. And you might be going through something where you're like, I don't see how it can ever be okay. It can be okay. I didn't think I was going to be okay. And I didn't wake up one, one morning and 
a switch flipped and I thought I was okay. It was a long, long process. And I didn't realize the moment it became okay again, because by that point I was just okay. And I was, you know, back to my life and I was feeling really good. And it was, you know, after a couple of weeks of being like, you know, I'm not like, I'm feeling really great today and I've got this under control was when I realized that I was okay. So it's possible for everyone. And I don't want to see anyone go through that because it was really weird and bad. And you know, a lot of, a lot of sitting in the dark, ordering Postmates, playing video games by yourself. So don't be, don't be like me. How many times did those Postmates actually come through though and weren't wrong? Uh, right. You know, oh, I will say this. Snap. Here's no, my, they, I should have talked, suck. About, I should have talked about this in the hands-on section. <laughs> I played a lot of Postmates. <laughs> I played a lot played of the Postmates, Postmates roulette um, game and suddenly, and let me what tell you, you get? what you gotta get? <laughs> Seven out of 10 Postmates, I get the, I can't, I can't find your apartment. Can you come meet me or can you come find it? And then I watched their car leave. I actually had someone deliver my food to an apartment in another building and the person in the other building took it. No. And I was like, no, post me. No, I had like a, if you want to talk about a bad panic attack, I was hungry. <laughs> Thinking about my pizza, but you do live across the street from a Red Robin. Several amazing like chain restaurants. I do <laughs> amazing. I don't know that we call BJ. Okay, okay, amazing. okay. Amazing Let's overstatement. Several well, very delicious in a pinch chain restaurant. Pizookies, man, get that pizookie. Oh, I fucking love piz- oh, get now that pizookie. Oh, now I need a pizookie. It's a pizookie. Yeah. It's, a pizookie. Oh, it's a cookie in a pizza pan. It's giant. Oh yeah, no, I will show you the yeah. ways of the pizookie. But yeah, TLDR. Yeah. Sometimes when life gives you lemons, you just got to shut said up we and eat the damn lemons. tonight on dinner. Whoops. <laughs> you just got to eat the damn lemons. Eat the damn because lemons. sometimes, you know, that's your vitamin C. You won't get scurvy. Uh, you it's know, true. good dose of all like the nutrients It's a natural antiseptic. Need. It's a natural antiseptic. Sometimes you just got to eat the lemons and it's fine. Just clear it People out. People are going to think you're weird. Just eat the lemons. Just like don't bite into the rind. Yeah. Don't do that part. Yeah. Well, thank Yay. you so much for sharing yes. your story and for letting... Not only us and everyone who cares about you know that you're doing much better, but everybody out there who's been worried about you and asking after you and missing you. We've also missed you, too. It is a little bittersweet, I have to say, because our I know our patrons got super excited during the streams that you came back. Oh, but God. on the heels of great news is unfortunately more great news for you, but on a little bit of sad news for us as your friends here at What's Good Games. I mean... It's not goodbye forever because I will be around, but I unfortunately have to leave the show. <laughs> and it doesn't have to do with my health. I'm not like, I, I, I have to, I have to ugly cry. Yeah. I have to stress. It's not because of my health. Something is happening. I can, literally can't say shit about it, but I hopefully will be able to It's an amazing career opportunity with a fantastic company that we cannot name that we are super excited for you and 100% support you and are super bummed that your involvement with this opportunity is going to prohibit you from being on the show. But you, of course, are welcome back on the show whenever we can have your presence. I will be around. Not in outer space. Yeah, the thing that's keeping me sane is knowing that I come to San Mateo at least once a month, at least. I know you're not I'll be far. Here. And I just want to see your beautiful face. I want to drink Japanese whiskey. I oh, want to yeah. talk about Final Fantasy 15. Yes. I want to talk about all of the things with you. And we will. I'm not going And anywhere. it'll be fine. I know it'll be fine. We're friends forever now. Yes. Too okay. bad. So Alexa Ray's final What's Good Games episode will be next, next week. week. That'll be fourth. the official goodbye. Oh, yes. oh, it is. May the 4th. Yeah. May the 4th. Wait, no. Fifth? Yeah. yeah. May the 4th. Fourth. Fourth. May the 4th. Fourth. May the 4th fourth. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. Next week will be my last show. So we have one more hurrah hurrah. I totally didn't plan it this way. When I showed up on the stream on Tuesday, I like didn't really know any of this stuff was going to happen. Well, uh, let me pitch you. Uh, let me softball you an idea right now. What do you think about doing an Alexa Ray Q&A for the final segment next week where people can send in their questions? Sure. Let's do it. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I think that'd be really nice. Actually. <gasps> so if you guys have questions that you want Alexa Ray to answer, whether they be Kingdom Hearts, Fire Emblem, Pokemon, whatever related, or just general life questions. Generally, we only do Q&As with our Patreon community, but this is a special occasion. Um, you can send us those questions to contact at whatsgoodgames.com. Put in the subject line in all capital letters, listen to the instructions, Alexa Ray, 
And that way we'll know exactly what your email is about. And so we'll make sure to siphon it off and make sure it gets answered and read. Um, I can't wait for someone to type in all caps, listen to the instructions, Alexa Ray. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will not. No, no. I will not. Let me clarify ever. since Steimer has now punked me. Um, in all caps in the subject line, write Alexa Ray. Yes. And then uh, your question. Uh, and we will do our best to get as many questions answered as possible. Um, you could also tweet us your questions. You can put them on our Facebook page. You can put them in the comments of this video. And we will collect as many as we can. You can literally ask me anything. <laughs> Doesn't mean you'll answer it. Right. You, but you can, can ask I me guarantee anything. your question will get answered. Right. But you can ask it. I um, sure can. But um, of course, you know, we're going to miss you. Uh, we look forward to taking selfies and photos with you and posting at them every on the event because I'll still be around. I'm not like disappearing. You're not forever. leaving games industry. No, I'm not leaving games. But uh, she won't be able to announce where she's at for for a little while. It's gonna be a bit. Yeah, yeah. but we bit. are super excited for you. Oh, yeah. This is gonna be so awesome, and I couldn't ask for better news for my dear friend who has been having a dark time coming, having a time coming out of that dark time into really great into a really great new opportunity it's been a time i wouldn't say it was a dark time it was like really kooky cuckoo bananas it was like limbo it was a yeah, weird place it was you it was like, like in you, the upside down yes oh, i was the, i was in the upside no down maybe not that whole no. time no it's like like limbo the game maybe yeah. limbo's also oh. terrifying little cuckoo mm-hmm. banana well some uh, terrifying all right it was it was cuckoo bananas yeah, a little weird, nice. a little crazy. Um, I don't like, I'm super OCD and type A about like the future and I have to have everything planned out. So like stuff like that is just like, I, I, I can't, I don't know what's going to happen. Like yeah. I can't but handle we're it. We're here with alcohol ready for you to I know. feed it to you, to drink it with you, to support you. You got this. Hell so before I go, I owe all of you something very important. Yes. Oh, let, me give, let me give like some kind of official intro because there's no doubt that we have to clip this out as a separate standalone wait, video because the internet is going to need this video. I will need this video. So wait, wait, social media. You're going to cue up the music? <laughs> tap, tap that shit, girl. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your definitive way to play Kingdom Hearts, the video game series. Hosted by one Alexa Ray Korea, the definitive Kingdom Hearts expert. Oh, yes. The author of Kingdom Hearts 2. Yes. The book, not the game. I did not write that game. Please don't. Is there a subtitle to that book? No, it's just Kingdom Hearts 2. He from Boss Fight book. Books. Boss from Boss Fight Books. You can buy it right now where books are sold on or on Amazon.com. And I believe it's being translated into French right now. So if you live in France, it'll be there out there soon. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. So I'm also the elected queen of Kingdom Hearts by the people. You forgot that title. Anyway. <laughs> so. Listen, you're like the mother of dragons over there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, you got a lot of titles Heartless. going on. No one's the mother of Heartless. It. So I go. wrote some notes. In my Kingdom Hearts notebook. I love this. So this I, is a video that people have been asking for for quite some time. I know. Time. I've been waiting for this for a very long time. So I I have played Kingdom Hearts. Uh, it's I <laughs> no, understatement you don't of the century. Say. I was <laughs> I was 14 when the first game came out, and I'm gonna be 30. <gasps> I just realized do we get month. to keep your Sora on set? Yes, you do. Yay. Yay. If you don't know, it's right over Alexa's right, right shoulder right there. Right by the the psychomancer. I might bring a couple more things to deposit here before I flutter away. Yes. Um, But I played the first game with my siblings. The story of that is in my book. I became obsessed with it. We became obsessed with it. And it just became this thing in my life that was always there. Like I went through phases of things that I liked. And like when I was 14, I was already, you know, a Tolkien scholar. That was my thing at that point. And Kingdom Hearts came along and I was like, oh, okay. And then you for know, some, it's, it's just a just small a accomplishment. And then for some reason, I latched onto this series, probably because it's Final Fantasy, which I love. Oh my goodness. So on brand. Sorry, guys. Because I love, I love Final Fantasy. Um, it, and, I, and I love Disney garbage. I love Disney. Disney is the greatest. Uh, my boyfriend took me to Disney World for our one-year anniversary. Disney That's how garbage. much I love Disney. Disney garbage. I love all of it. Like, just give it to me. I want it. Yeah, yeah. And like- this mashup just seemed like like it was weird like it was weird unexpected not totally kosher but like pretty good so I just latched onto it and it became my life uh and then I spent the next 
15 years playing these games, absorbing them, arguing about them, talking about them. Um, do not come to me and say, you've played Kingdom of Hearts. I will slap you. I have slapped a bitch for less. People oh, call it Kingdom of Hearts. That is Damn. not the title. Ooh. I, ve- I have a very specific memory of a very specific, specific person calling it that and being like, oh, I love Kingdom of Hearts. And I'm like, bitch, I never want to talk to you again. And I actually, I actually haven't talked to her in a long time. So, <laughs> oh, um, boy. Right. So this is very, very, it's, it's, it's very, very important to me. I've met, you know, Tetsuya Nomura on several occasions. Um, he gave me, after reading my story about my brothers on Polygon.com where I used to work, he gave me a gift. It is a signed box of the Kingdom Hearts 2 figures. And on it is the message is, please always stay close to your siblings. And oh. he signed it. Um, and I've seen him a couple times and he's like a really, he's very introverted and very chill, but it's just so crazy to me that he had this one idea and it's spun off into this insane thing where there's like, you know, on, you know, the, the, the D23 stage, it was a bunch of Japanese game developers and then like a life-size Woody, like dancing around. Very strange. Anyway, so, <laughs> you know, as you do. Here we go. And just like Kingdom Hearts, that was my prelude to the prologue. This is the prologue to the order I'm going to give you. <laughs> so the order in which they came out, this is so stupid. So Kingdom Hearts 1 came out in 2002. Chain of Memories came out in 2004 for the Nintendo DS. Kingdom Hearts 1 was on PlayStation 2. Right. Chain of Memories 2004 for the Nintendo DS. Kingdom Hearts 2 also came out for PlayStation the following year in 2005. And Chain of Memories was the plot bridge between 1 and 2. If you didn't play Chain of Memories, you could get away with playing just 1 and 2. Not anymore. Uh, 2008, Coded, which came out as a mobile game in Japan... Um, but then came out later in the States as recoded, remastered for a handheld. Uh, 358 over two days came out in 2009, also known as the bullshit one. Uh, 2010, Birth by Sleep. So we're talking one, two, like, like a Kingdom Hearts game is coming out every year for some system. And then 2010, by the way, it was for the PlayStation Portable. PSP. Birth by Sleep for the PSP. And then Dream Drop Distance in 2012 for the 3ds dream drop distance fun fact was my first professional game review i wrote it for polygon.com i gave it a bad review because i hated it um and then in 2013 they launched unchained key which is the mobile game now known as union cross which is ongoing 2017 we got 2.8 which had 0.2 in it and in theory we're getting kingdom hearts 3 this year so With very little exception there's been like a kingdom hearts game coming out every year for the past 15 years i might have to make some kind of a graphic I'm already lost. You'll have after to make a graphic. Third, after the third title, I'm gone. So, yeah, it pretty sucks. And they added a bunch of, like, they did a bunch of compilations to make it easier. And they're all on PlayStation 4 only. So you have 1.5 HD Remix, which is the final mix of Kingdom Hearts 1. The final mix versions. There's a couple of final mix versions. What does Fi- that mean? So in, in Japan, they got the final mix version of a game, which means... It's the same game, but they added a bunch of extra bosses and challenges and stuff. And every single game, the, the, the hallmark of the final mix was there's a secret boss that was incredibly difficult. So freaking difficult. You had to like complete the whole game and level up all your crap to high, high, high levels to beat the boss. And the boss was a clue to the next game. Mm. and there were also all those secret videos after you beat the game like kingdom hearts 2 was teased at the end of kingdom hearts 1 you had riku and his organization the organization coat and then who we later learned was roxas fighting in this reigning city running up buildings flipping keyblades around everyone was like this isn't kingdom hearts that's when kingdom hearts took the weird turn so before you continue yes what ask me questions what is the keyblade what is this thing? it's a keyblade it's a blade made of keys it's a blade that's so when you say a blade you mean like a sword Yes, but it's not an actual blade. It's just a blunt object that you hit things with. So, so it's, it's just a melee weapon. Yes. A keyblade is not a sword. It's a melee weapon. It's, it's 100% a melee weapon. It's a, have it's a key bludgeoner. It. It's a keyblade. And it's also a key. Every world has a key blade ascribed to it, and that key can be used to lock that world. Is it like from the Bifrost? Kind of. Okay. Kind of. Kind of. It can unlock worlds. Sort of. Lock and unlock worlds. And okay. every world has them. A world being a uh, Disney world. But it would be like if each world had its own Bifrost. Yeah. Instead of a master Bifrost so that you have unlocks all the worlds. 15 worlds. And, everyone, oh. and each there, one there has is, its own keyblade? There are t- oh my God. I'm gonna, you're going to hate me so much right now. There are two key, <laughs> two keyblades. Two and a half. Two and a half keyblades in half. existence. Like that, can, that can lock and unlock every world. 
Okay, it is so they're key- master skeleton keys. Yes, it's the key Sorum has the kingdom key. It is the king's key, which is the gold keyblade that Mickey Mouse has. And then there's the keyblade. Well, Mickey spell- Mouse is clearly the master okay, of the okay, universe. Okay. He is the master True. of the universe. I wrote about that in my book. Questions? I just wanted to the freaking order to play these games all right in. okay sorry i'm like getting no i'm so my quit were my questions detracting you from no, your ultimate I, goal I, please I ask me questions so confused that their master keys that mickey mouse has there there are two and a half i don't even know if that means one's a dagger so, so there are i'm just kidding <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> well one is uh, i'm not even gonna go there yeah, forget it's, it it's fine. forget yeah, i no. started this and we I, don't need to get we fine, don't need fine. to the, get buried in the details no. so yeah alexa ray you ask how can i play what order there are two questions here what order do i play them in and how, what can i skip yes valid Great questions, questions but i'm gonna answer the first question first but like all kingdom hearts shit this is there's a two-part answer here okay there's the episode order order a la star wars george lucas and then there's the machete order Okay. What does that mean? Okay. Both of these terms are have been used to refer to the order in which you watch the Star Wars films. Okay. The episode order is you play the games in order of the story's actual chronology. So like not what game came first, what game is first in the timeline of Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. The machete order is the order in which you play it that takes into account when, at what point in the series the game came out and when... When you need that explanation from a, from a game that came out later in the series before you can continue in release order. Is it cutting the fat? It, it, it no. Okay. Uh, it's for one dramatic effect and two for clarity. So for, uh, I will do the machete order second. Go. The episode okay. order is episode easier. Order. Let's do that. Episode order. Y'all going to hate me because, well, no, most of these are on PlayStation 4 now. And then there's one mobile game. Uh, so in order. Union Cross, which is the mobile game. Uh, by the way, I uh, just want to stress that Union Cross, the story of Union Cross is still ongoing. And there are 700 levels. You should really get started if you're going to play Union 700 Cross. 700 There are levels. 700 missions. Jesus H. Have you done all of them? Yes. On proud mode. Uh, what does that what mean? Is that, is that hard? It's like, it's an, it's an extra, extra difficulty where you can like do other stuff. I, by the way, have made, and it's, it, it's a free to play mobile game. I have managed to get through all 700 levels and play through without spending a dime. That game is free. That's great. Okay. So go. Go do it. Okay. Union Cross. Birth by Sleep, which is the prequel with the Keyblade Masters in it. Kingdom Hearts 1. Took two games before we can get to Kingdom Hearts 1. Kingdom Hearts 1. And then Chain of Memories. 358 over two days. Kingdom Hearts 2. Two more games to get to Kingdom Hearts 2. Coded. Dream Drop Distance, 0. 0.2 of Fragmentary Passage, and then you're all ready for Kingdom Hearts 3. <laughs> okay. Yep. So that is the order. Okay. That is the episode order. Again, Union Cross, oh. Birth by Sleep, Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, 358 over two days, Kingdom Hearts 2, Coded, Dream Drop Distance, 0. 0.2, and then you'll be ready. How many hours of gameplay, if I'm playing it on baby-ass baby mode? Which there is. Will it take me to get through all of those games? Each game is like maybe if you don't do any of the side stuff, like if you don't want to save the Dalmatian puppies or like really oh, go in. But of course no! I'm going to save the Dalmatian puppies. Oh my puppies. God. I didn't realize that was going to elicit that response. So in every game. Puppies? The 101 Dalmatians have been split up and blown across the universe. In every game? Yes. And they're locked in treasure chests. Why? And you have Who's to save blowing them. these Dalmatians up? Well, well, I've had a little, people. I don't know. I've had a little bit of a time, so I could be misremembering a couple of them, but I know the Dalmatians are in the first game. Okay. okay. You have to save the, save the Dalmatians. Okay. And Does that mean you have to collect 101 of them? Yes. <gasps> oh, oh, fuck. Okay. But then yeah. when you, you bring them puppies. puppies. <laughs> no, 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 no. When <laughs> you're all like puppies. JK when you bring them back <laughs> when you bring them back to Pongo and Perdita they give you a gift I don't oh, fucking care how, okay, Pongo kind of, and Perdita should be how, out looking for their own kids this, how good is uh, this gift though? depending on how hard it is to get the puppies uh, it could be like a potion or like a piece a of your gummy ship potion or like a piece of your gummy ship or like an upgrade mm, or an item no we're collecting 101 puppies nope we're giving All right, you back on. one of their okay. children they give you how many hours sorry like how well, there. Uh, this this includes all one, all two, them. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This includes all nine games. Um, Union Cross. Oh my! It's taken me like three months to get to that. Uh, Wonderful. To the seven hundred thing. But if you take out, let's take out Union Cross. Zero point two is about two hours. Okay. 
Okay. That's doable. I'm going to do the math do on my one? phone. Okay. Hopefully it's not that I don't hard. know. Maybe like okay. almost 300 hours. Oh. Mm. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been more? a great video. No, just probably kidding. more. See, um, here's the thing. Like you can probably you can mainline. More? You can mainline a Kingdom Hearts game and just do all the the straight. I'm going to world. I'm going to world of beating someone. I'm going. Some of the later bosses will be a little hard for you because bosses in Kingdom Hearts are cuckoo bananas. Cuckoo. Right. Um, but you could probably do it in like 300 hours if you just forsake literally everything else but you really can't yeah no so clearly if you're like me in the vast majority of people out there excuse me um <laughs> that's not happening no get fucked uh wait what can we skip alexa ray <laughs> no i have to tell you about the, ma the machete order first okay. okay okay let's go machete order so the machete order wait is organized. first off what does this mean machete order machete order so there's a website called like no swinging machetes and this website came up with their own way for watching all the first six Star Wars films. Four, no, it's four, five, and then you go back to two, three, and then six. You skip one, and at and after episode five, where you're you're you are now questioning like, oh, why is Luke? You know, how is Darth Vader Luke's father? Spoiler alert for everyone. Um, <laughs> That's not a spoiler. Then that's, it, that's like, like you, you have all the information of like, oh my God, Darth Vader is Luke's father. And then you go back in time and see his father's story. So it's for dramatic effect. And also you are at a point where that background information will make sense to you. Right. Does that, uh, okay. does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Okay. The machete order. Did I take anything out of here? I think I took one game out. <laughs> that's it. Cool. All right. Did I? Yeah, I took one game out of here and that's coded. And I'm going to talk about coded in a second. Um, it's similar ish to release order. Kingdom Hearts one, Chain of Memories, three fifty eight over two days, Kingdom Hearts two, Birth by Sleep, Union Cross, Dream Drop Distance, zero point two. I put zero point two at the end because of the stuff that happens at the end of zero point two will not make sense if you haven't already seen everything going on with Sora and Rico. I would also say you can swap Kingdom Hearts two and three hundred fifty eight over two days. Um, I feel like the dramatic effect is there for either one. Both of them offer a lot of pertinent information, but depending on how surprised you want to be with what the fuck is up with Roxas, play Kingdom Hearts 2 first. I took Coded out because Coded is bullshit. Um, it's, a, it's a rehash of all the events of the previous games. There's really nothing new. Like You get very little information. It doesn't really add to the story, so you can completely walk away from that if you want to. Um, if you can play the final mix versions, so if you can get 1.5 HD remix, 2.5 HD remix, play the final mix versions because you have those secret bosses and secret bosses are pretty cool. Um, I already told you that Union Cross has like 700 missions. Yeah. So you can get it together. Um, and I did some math for you because I know you're probably asking, well, I want to play all the Kingdom Hearts games. How much is this going to cost me? It will cost you $110 and some tax because 1.5 and 2.5 are a collection and it's $49.99 and 2.8 is $59.99 and Union Cross is free. They've got to be on sale somewhere though because there were retail discs for both for of sure. those collections. I know. That's if they're not on sale. I read the copy for the 2.8. HD final chapter prologue on GameStop Didn't TV. Didn't you call me about that? You were yes, like, how do I, I did. do this? So a lot of people don't know that I wrote in the final year that I was hosting GameStop TV. I also was the copywriter and I wrote a lot of, I wrote all of my own scripts. And when we got the Kingdom Hearts ad, I immediately contacted Alexa Ray and was like, please fucking help me. So I don't sound like I'm talking out of my ass in all of these GameStop stores. And she helped me write this yes. copy. So here's wow. my order. I'm going to give you my order, which is not the machete order or the episode order. Okay. Okay. What's the Alexa All right. order? It involves some cheating. I hope you like cheating. I do. I, I cheating. love cheating. You play Kingdom Hearts 1. You fucking play it. Chain of Memories, you have two options. You play the version on the PlayStation 4 remix disc, or you just watch the cutscenes. You can do either or. The thing about playing playing the game means you get some extra intel and extra time and backstory with the rest of the organization members that are dead before you get to Kingdom Hearts 2. Spoiler alert. Um, which is nice. There's some cool boss battles. But if you can take it or leave it, watch the cutscenes. Um, 358 over two days. The only way you can play that now is if you like pull out your DS. Don't freaking play it. Just the, the 1.5... I forgot to mention this. 1.5 HD Remix does not have the game on it. It only has cutscenes and then text boxes explaining the events of what's happening. 
So you can literally get the mm. whole story of 358 over two days from that, but you're going to miss out on some really epic moments. Like some of the final boss battles are really heart wrenching, depending on how much you've invested in these characters. So Chain of Memories, 358 over two days, take it or leave it, cutscenes or play. Then you play Kingdom Hearts 2. You play that whole game. You do not skip anything. You do not skip anything. You do not skip anything. You do you not find skip those anything. puppies. Do not, yeah, you find the puppies. You do not skip anything. And then you play Birth by Sleep. You play Birth by Sleep. Don't watch the cutscenes. There's a lot of sh shit that goes on in there. Um, Union Cross, you can play it or you can watch the cutscenes on YouTube. There's a couple of, couple of the cutscenes are bullshit. There's some crap where you're running around in the underworld with Hades and he's flirting with you or whatever. You can skip all that nonsense. <laughs> That's weird. You do, it is very weird. You don't need it. You don't need to hang out with Cinderella. You don't need to hang out with But why I like Alice. Cinderella? She's whatever. She's doing some weirdo shit. Um, oh. But you can literally watch. Literally, I mean, just, she does ride around in a pumpkin. She does ride around in a pumpkin. But you can skip all of the <laughs> world cutscenes and then just watch main things to the plot. And then that story is ongoing. I believe they are the next chunk of story is probably going to be dropped later this year closer to kingdom hearts 3 uh dream drop distance do not play that game i hated that game i thought the drop system was frustrating it was too much and too little story content all the story content is crammed into like the final like three hours just watch a let's play watch a let's play watch the cutscenes. like that's really all you need is what happens at the end and then 0 0.2 play 0 0.2 it is two hours you have two hours i'm assuming it's so like that, a movie yeah and then you're all ready for Kingdom Hearts 3, which is probably going to be 10,000 bajillion million hours. So how much is the truncated skippable version? How many hours is that? What you just described. She well, skipped how much? Like you can, if you, if you skip everything you said, you can skip how many, let's see, you play one, play. I don't know. Maybe cut two, that whole thing in half. Three, so two. still 150 hours. I mean, that's only if you mainline it, too. It could take you longer. That's really not bad for those games, that no. many games. I know it sounds I like a lot, but... I know it doesn't sound that bad, but, like, holy fuck. Oh, right now. Yeah, girl. Yeah. If I'm going to play one Kingdom Hearts thing before Cage To get you 3, ready for Kingdom Hearts 3... And I'm just going to, like, read a wiki post. Just play Kingdom Hearts 2, then. If you, if you only have time between now and when Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out, just play Kingdom Hearts what 2. What about 1 and 2? If I played 1 and 2, is that good enough? The beginning of two, of two has some weird crap happening in the beginning where you kind of get a little bit of an idea of where everyone's coming from. If you literally have no freaking time, just read the wiki for all of them and only play Kingdom Hearts 2. Got it. But read the wikis in, in the order I said and then play two and then go read the rest of the wikis. Okay. Okay. <sighs> What's yes. up with these names? I've always wondered that. The names of these games are so fucking You weird. know, I don't know. I like when to are we, I'm not going to get a full confession from Nomura san about what's what your name. naming convention is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I never, never asked him that. Um, I know that Dream Drop Distance was called that because it was on the 3DS. So it was Kingdom Hearts 3D. Ah. Mm, it, was a, it, was, it was a play on 3D. I don't know what a fragmentary passage is all about. I always wondered about that. Birth by Sleep makes sense. Not after you play the game, but after you play the next two games. Okay. <laughs> so not, that does not explain in that particular no. game. So it's, a, it's a long planted foreshadowing. Chain of Memories is a, I mean, that's pretty, that's, that's, it's, it's yeah, very straightforward. 358 over two days means Bad division. the game, yes, but the game takes place over 358 days divided by the two people living those 358 days. Oh. And those two people are connected in a stupid, weird way. Okay. It's a terrible so, title, but that's an interesting. Wow. Premise. Yeah. All right. So the bottom line, play Kingdom Hearts 2, read the wikis. Oh, you geez. did it. I did it. I've been brain fucked. Sorry. Sorry. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your. You? No, you that is, there's, the there's a fly <laughs> in the studio. There's a, that's your definitive way to play the entire Kingdom Hearts series, to play some skippable, skippable Skip, moments, skippable, skippable or skippable. to just play skippable. Kingdom Hearts 2. I mean, if you're really ambitious and you want to play all of them, go ahead and play all of them. But like, you don't. Don't, yeah. don't be me. Look what I've become. Don't be me. <laughs> You've become, become awesome. a published author who yeah. has a Kingdom Hearts book, which by the way, where can people find that again? Amazon.com. Type my name in or just type in Kingdom Hearts 2 and it's there. No one really writes critically about Kingdom Hearts 2 at all. Whoops, sorry. Um, and then um, you can go to bossfightbooks.com and buy it there. If you're at, you know, PAX or... I saw your book at Emerald City Comic Con. Yeah, like, it, they, they sell it at a bunch of shows. So if, like, Boss White Books is selling, sometimes, like, I Am 8-Bit will sell our books or whatever. So you can pick up a physical copy. Yeah. That's great. Well, yeah. thank you so much for letting everybody know. And um, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed. Now. Yeah. 
I had to give a cut point. Yep. Because we're going to clip that fucking shit out. It's yeah. It's going to happen. Clip it out. Clip it, clip it oh. real good. Excuse Burping. Me. Yeah, girl. Burping. Uh, it's probably time to wrap this podcast up. I would say so. Um, yes. Alexa Wright, it's been great to have you back. Not yet. No goodbyes yet. One more. No. One more. No. One more. We're not going to get sad yet, but next week, fucking, I'm going to get real weepy. It's going to happen. No weepy. Oh, it's yeah. going to happen. And I'll, I'll be talking to you through the internet. Through the magic. No, so this is the last the time. Internet. Don't I don't want to think oh, about it. Oh no, no. no. This is the it. last time I'm we're all in the room together it. doing I'm the not, podcast no. together. Don't no, do I'm no I I I'm pushing that thought to the back of my head. It's fine. It's not the truth, it's not the reality. It's oh not God. goodbye, it's a see you later. You said that and I started sweating. <laughs> I'm just calling out <laughs> I'm just calling the facts like I see them. I was gonna say it. I would no. Um ah! ladies and gentlemen, um we appreciate you and listening to us. Sometimes ramble, sometimes rant, but most importantly, have really fun, meaningful discussions about this hobby we all love. Yes. Yay. Why'd you, why'd you scoff? No, I, because we're, we're silly. We of are course. silly. Be, I, I didn't even, I didn't even say what the What's Good Games podcast is. It's a place for video silly. game news, commentary, analysis, it's and funny, funny stuff. stuff. Uh, I missed that at the top of the show this yeah, t- today. It happens. It's but like the funny stuff is why people love our show. It wasn't a scoff. It was you know, a there's lots of places. We know that there's lots of places that you can get video game news and commentary and analysis. Funny stuff. We're not, we're not deaf. We know we have competition out there, but yeah. we love that you come and watch our show and listen to our show and subscribe and rate and support us on Patreon and uh, talk with us on Twitter and Facebook. Like you guys mean a lot to us, and we're really excited to have some cool interactions with you during our anniversary stream, which is coming up. If you guys haven't already put it on your calendar for Friday, May 11th, please do so. We're in the midst of still planning and we're going to be, you know, trickling out information over the next couple of weeks. Um, But um, one thing I do want to mention tomorrow. So right now, as of recording, it's Wednesday. Tomorrow, Thursday, uh, we're going to a reveal event for a game and the embargo goes live the morning the podcast goes live. Boom. Um, So we can say that we went to the rise of the tomb raider event in los angeles we played the game we have some thoughts about the game we're hopefully going to be putting out a video on maybe one of our social channels some like light impressions since we weren't able to do production and get the that impressions inserted into the podcast before it published due to when the embargo was but next week on the show We'll talk about our hands-on impressions. I can't wait to hear about Rise it. of the Tomb Raider. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but that's fine. Is it Shadow, Shadow of the Tomb Raider? Raider? Rise well, was the last I can't one. wait to hear about it. Yeah, Rise is the last one, right? Yeah. That's Tomb Raider, my Rise, no Shadow. No, thank you for correcting I me. You, I clearly was like in a one-track mind thinking I had it right. Uh, so uh, Shadow of a Tomb Raider. Of the Tomb of Raider. Tomb Raider. <laughs> Shadow <laughs> of a Tomb Raider. <laughs> I like that version better, actually. I d- you know what? I like that better, too, because it makes it sound really dramatic. It the does. Tomb Raider. A Shadow tomb Raider. of a Tomb Raider. Of a Tomb, tomb Raider. Shadow Sounds of a like tomb a song. Raider. I clearly have had a couple glasses of wine. It's fine. Um, all right. Now I'm going to wrap up the show. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for hanging in there with us. We hope you had a fantastic time listening and watching. We love you. Have a great weekend. We will see you next week. Bye.